stream it's is it friday night it's friday night and we're all right how's it going guys welcome back to another pokemon card live stream oh my gosh look at all these cards the table is so full i need to get back to catching up on those please shipping requests in the please shipping channel let's get these stickers off the table you see some lovely slabs ahead of you uh you know i have quite a few of these so i'm not worried about not having enough for like the live custom boosters so tonight if you're interested in them, you could pick up a Colossal and a Rillaboom. How nice. I'd really like to sell them as a pair. Also, we have these lovely Hyper Rares in the middle. Uh, Eternatus, who appears to be the least popular. Butterfree VMAX. And Scorch. Wow, there's something to be said about the original Hyper Rare Scorch. They kept remaking them, right? <laughs> All right, what, are what other news do we have for tonight? There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened. I did a bunch of cleaning... I got boxes on the way. Oh, right, restocks. We have, um, here we are. Oh, look at this. We have the Hoops Blasters. They've returned. Okay, those were very popular. The NFL Panini Prism cards, or I guess they're just called Prism. The Prism cards are up to five spots sold. So there's seven spots remaining. We sold one spot yesterday. Yesterday, five-hour lunch. Live stream blew out my back. <laughs> I was pretty wrecked by the end of it. I actually have back pain right now. So it's, it's just not very healthy to sit in this. Wait, don't, wait a second. Hold on. That was Don Russ. Oh, that's Don Russ. Oh, I didn't even notice. Eddie, if you hadn't said anything, I would have thought it was, it was the regular uh, blasters. Give me a minute. <laughs> hold on. Hoops are still sold out then. All right, give me a minute. <laughs> I better fix that right away. So the Don Russ packs look very similar to the Blasters then. They have the same color scheme. The live stream blew my back out. Oh my Lord. Now you guys are gonna need to wait a minute while I figure out these Don Russ. How many are in a box? Uh, let me open it up real fast. Eddie Petty. What's up, Eddie? How's it going, man? Eddie Petty had a really nice night last night. He pulled the Charizard out of the top two booster box. That's the best pull in the box by far. We have some more tops twos. I thought that it was really fun opening those, and I think they have a lot of potential to pull more of those Charizards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven packs in a Don Rest box. Eleven packs. And we want it from 2021. Give me a moment. I gotta pick out a, a price that makes sense, okay? All right, I'm still very new with pricing these basketball packs, so I'm, I'm going to go with this. So the Don Russ packs have been priced. Uh, the hoops are still on the way. I just realized how loud the music was. <laughs> Actually, I think I'll make the Don Russ $1 cheaper. I'm going to bring the price down. We've never opened Don Russ, and I want to encourage people to take a look into them, especially our viewers who enjoy Sparks cards. So tonight, we have another new thing. We have Supreme Rivalry. Wait a second. These aren't Pokies. Supreme Rivalry with Dragon Ball Z Super. Very cool. Or do I just call it Dragon Ball Super? So Supreme Rivalry is here. What else? Tonight is going to be a Cosmic Eclipse night. There will be a reserve list of 24 packs. And when they sell out, we'll open all of them. If they don't sell out, we'll open whoever's on the list. So let's say only 10 packs sell. Uh, by the end of the stream, all 10 packs will be opened. So that's the, that is the Cosmic Eclipse list. 
you can see I provided all kinds of interesting information about the poles on the Cosmic Eclipse box. So this is for people who are maybe a little scared to buy a pack that costs as much as $22. So the top poles from this set, this is like a best outcome. Let's say you could pull that card in, get it to grade 10. Well, it would be the Charizard Brexton Hyper Rare at around $600. Arceus Dialgopalkia at around $588. Lily at around $500. Rose at around $450. And Red's Pikachu at around $400. Wow. So that's Cosmic Eclipse, and the new thing is that it's only for tonight. After tonight, I won't be offering Cosmic. We'll probably do something else, okay? Just a special thing for the night. The other thing I want to point out is the reserve list for the Cosmic ensures that nobody will know what's in the box until we are opening the box. So that's really important, I think, especially with packs that cost more uh, there should be no searching at all in a more expensive box because, you know, the, when a pack is really cheap, it tends to move very quickly. People buy a lot of it. Uh, they buy it in volume. And so it's hard to snipe a cheap box of cards because you never know who's about to buy the next 10 packs, right? That could really – but with a with the booster pack that's quite expensive, it's very easy to snipe. That's because they don't move very quickly. So you kind of know what was opened last before you, you know, you have beforehand knowledge. So that's why we're kind of changing our whole strategy on the cha channel here. We wanna make it much harder for people to snipe. We wanna give people a much better chance at pulling a really cool card uh, out of a good box, okay? And there's upsides and downsides to that. You know, it's, it's not as immediate. P some people don't wanna wait to the end of the live stream. I guess if they were to sell quickly, then that wouldn't be as big of an issue. Okay, wow, what a live stream yesterday night. A lot of these boxes are full all the way. These boxes holding people's cards, like there's barely any room left. Especially these top ones here. You see these? They're like all full. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> Maybe create some new spots. You know, if I got all this bulk off of the windowsill, that could be a temporary holding spot because there's no sunlight at night. So I could put some boxes over there while we're live at night. And then during the daytime, I'll bring them back down to the table to get them out of sunlight. Fill my box, mister, says Daddy K. We do have a pre-order tonight, which means I can go ahead and jump over to opening that. I don't know how busy it's going to be. I mean, it was busy all night yesterday for like five hours, which tells me tonight could be not as busy because people will have already blown their wad, basically. Oh, but I'm wrong. There's like 50 orders in already. Holy moly, guys. We've got Mr. Brandon Canella. He's the pre-order. Let me go ahead and turn the music back on now. Brandon Canella. He wants a box of Blazing Vortex. So I'm selling the Blazing Vortex at a loss. Same with the uh, Phantom Rage, and they won't be offered anymore. Uh, he's going to get a whole box of it with live shipping. He also mentions he's got a bag. Okay, let's do that. So Brandon, I'll begin by locating your bag. What's up, Mike Side? He says, psych! You didn't, you didn't head out? I thought you were going on like a vacation or something. <laughs> Brett, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Did I, did I mention that? Some of you guys might have heard about that because I was mentioning it in the Discord. Um, oh, right. I should mention the giveaway too. There was a giveaway today, but we'll also t it, it, it's going to be in the next live stream too. So much to talk about. So much to talk about. Tell you what, let's talk about that giveaway first though. Because I know that's what you guys will be interested in. So tonight, there is a giveaway for these two cards. Rillaboom and Colossal. Actually, it will be tonight and tomorrow night. Okay? So tonight and tomorrow night. You are on vacation. Oh, very nice, man. Thanks for popping in. It's just a 9 and a 7, but it's for free. So it's a nice little thing for you guys. And uh, if you want to join, it's just like the previous giveaways. Scroll to the top of the description. There's some instructions. Yes, you do have to be subscribed. Yes, I will check before I ship these to you. If you're the winner and you're not subbed, I mean, <laughs> you're just not going to get them. They're going to go to the next guy. Okay. How did you get a seven? Dangerous way to get into collecting gold Pokemon cards for whoever wins these. I know. Uh, he had a little mark down here, and I think that's how he got the seven. Saw your toes and kitty's toes. Are you finally going to be transformed into your true gender? What? All right, so these two are the giveaway. And uh, again, you just follow the instructions in the description and uh, I'm happy to give them out to somebody. Somebody will really enjoy them. Can't go wrong with some free 
pokies. Let's grab that Blazing Vortex box. Let's see. Here we are. Why do I have to go to the doctors? I think I have Lyme disease. So my wife and I got bit by ticks the other day. We were walking through the woods for the first time out here and we caught ticks on ourselves and uh, didn't think much of it. But then this bizarre rash developed uh, and it looks like a bullseye. And I looked it up. It was like early signs of Lyme disease. And it shows like a rash that looks like a bullseye. So I'm heading off to the doctors tomorrow or technically today. And they're going to probably prescribe me antibiotics, which if you take those very early, apparently you can just cure it. So yeah, it's pretty, um, <laughs> I feel like such a newbie out here. I am not used to living in the woods or anything like that, but we got some really forested area. There's deer all over the place and raccoons and everything. Um, you know what surprised me about it, though, was how easy it was to end up getting bit by ticks. I think I had like six tick bikes. And here's what really surprised me. The ticks are so small. I always thought ticks were kind of like larger, you know, because I've seen ticks before on my, you know, go out somewhere with my family camping, maybe. But ticks can actually be extremely small, like as small as a poppy seed. That's how small, like the little poppy seeds on your bun, smaller than that. Small as a period at the end of a sentence. So I didn't know that about ticks. Ticks can be extremely small and still bite you. And uh, yeah, they totally nibbled on me. Life gives you Lyme disease, make limonade. That's right. Well, so we're gonna head off to the doctor and um, again, they're probably gonna prescribe an antibiotic and then we're just going to take that. <laughs> Woo! All right, here we go. So I feel fine now. <laughs> I've read that Lyme disease is a bacteria and it's a, it's a very resistant bacteria to your immune system. That's basically it. Your body has trouble getting rid of it and your body can overreact to the bacteria and basically uh, do some friendly fire because it's trying so hard to get rid of it. Lyme disease is very dangerous. You need to really take it seriously. A friend of mine was hospitalized for a while. Well, Mr. Michael Ross, you'll be happy to know that we're heading off to the doctor tomorrow anyway, so. We're on our way. <laughs> what else are we going to do? What's up, Brad? It's not like malaria necessarily, uh, but yeah, it can it can do some damage. Lyme disease is good for the soul. That's right. Sleep. Haven't been a few live streams. What's up, Brad's man? That's true. You missed the good one yesterday. We opened up a whole box of top series two. Another crazy thing that happened, uh, well, it happened yesterday. I finally got the Wave Runner, a Yamaha Wave Runner. It's a, it's a jet ski, personal watercraft, you know, like a Sea-Doo. And it was pricey and it was a used one. <laughs> it's already got a bunch of hours on it. We probably overpaid for it. Anyways, I finally got to retrieve it. In order to get the Wave Runner, I had to meet up with the guys selling it. It's a Yamaha dealer. He drove it down here on a, on a trailer, of course. And he parked in the water and I actually had to drive it home from where, you know, it was a public ramp. I had to drive it home from that public ramp to our dock. I'd never done anything so bizarre as that before. Never done anything so bizarre. And I haven't ridden a Wave Runner or a Sea-Doo or anything like that since I was a little kid. Like I was really little the first time I went on one. And it was so crazy driving it. It was, uh, it was like a crazy workout, first of all. I could barely hold on to it especially if you went fast. But here was the hardest part. Here in Missouri, it's like 50 degrees out here. It's freaking freezing. We're having some sort of cold front or something. So I went outside. I didn't bring a coat or a long sleeve shirt or anything like that. I was shivering, just standing there waiting for him to put it in the water. I was, I was literally standing there shivering. And I climb on the Wave Runner and I start driving it out and it's do doing nothing but spraying water all over me. So here we are, it's like 50 degrees outside and I'm trying to drive it home. It's like a 15 minute drive on the lake and I am being soaked from head to toe in freezing cold water while the, and the wind's blowing so hard today. That's the worst part, really strong winds. So like my whole face is numb by the time I make it back to my dock and I have no idea what I'm doing on it either. It was really, really bizarre. <laughs> it was a very exciting day. There wasn't a line. What? No, that's too cold. Dude, it was freezing. So we got War Rock Basilios. Living the dreams. I, you know, just last week it was like 85 degrees. 
or not last week, but just a couple days ago, it was like 25 degrees. But today is like 50 degrees, which by the way is too bad for all the, uh, oh, War Rock Mountain. Nice, take a look at that. Boop. So lots of stuff going on. I hope the whole Lyme disease thing doesn't turn out to be anything serious. I, you know, I read that if you just take an antibiotic for it early, it's not really a big deal. And uh, again, we schedule a little doctor's appointment. She got bit too. She didn't get the rash. So she might, she might be lucky enough not to have it, but we're not taking any risks because we found out the rash doesn't appear on everyone. It appears about one quarter of the people who get Lyme disease never develop the rash. Uh, so she may have it as well. And she's going to take the antibiotics as well. I made an order and I forgot my address. I sent a penny to confirm it afterwards. Oh, thank you, Richard Johnson. Well, Mr. Richard, if we shipped you recently, I may have your address confirmed already in my address book, but that's, that's all, all right. War Rock Gag... Uh, what is it? Gactos? So, so far, he's got War Rock Mountain. That looks really cool. Did you all sit outside in the woods or something? Well, we went on a, a walk through, like, some truly wooded areas because we're new to this area, and we're like, you know, it would be fun, a nice night walk. So we went walking in, through tall grass and trees, and we did that for like 40, 40 minutes maybe. It was a decently long walk. You know, it's just what we would normally do is go walking. And we knew there's ticks, we knew there's Lyme disease, but we didn't really take it that serious, and we didn't really notice any ticks. But that's because we didn't know that the ticks can be so tiny, dude. I'm telling you guys, so you're all here listening. Uh, you're listening right now. And if I had to give you any advice about the subject, it's they're, they're not large ticks. You can barely see them. Like I found one on my arm and it's like invisibly small. So that's the scary part is really, really, really small ticks and you just can't see them or feel them. So I wish we could eradicate them by the way, but apparently there's not a lot of interest in eradicating ticks. Did you read the rest of the pre-order message? Yeah, you wanted the uh, girls from the, the Common Uncommons. We were going to do that last and very quickly, okay? Because these don't have a lot of value. Is that a girl? I can't tell. <laughs> I don't think that's a girl. All right, we're looking for girls. That a girl? That's a girl. Oh, that's a girl. That's a girl. I think that was a girl. Oh, I got an invoice from PSA. <laughs> Sometimes I get emails in the middle of the live stream, and it is very distracting. I think that's a girl. I'm looking for boo girls, all right? Like, if, if the girl looks like not like dateable material, like, look, obviously, Warrock Skyler. Woo! I'm getting sweaty over here. Oh, my. But if she looks like she's 15, she's going into the book pile. All right. So that's that. How about this side? Your prices are very reasonable. Thank you, Alberto. Well, and, and I want to remind you guys uh, that part of the prices always is some of it has to go toward covering the cost of a mistake Damage, loss, stolen goods. Some of the cost has to be shipping and supplies. You guys, you guys uh, underestimate the cost of shipping. It's always so much. And then finally, it's also uh, my paycheck at some point. Uh, and I work an awful lot in hours. And when you divide the earnings by the number of hours, it's fairly reasonable. I make good money on, uh, I make good money on the vintage stuff that I bought a long time ago and sat on. Or like a really good flip on a on a card that graded well. There's decent money to make there. You could probably have a you could probably have a hobby where you'd nothing but flip high value cards and not even touch sealed product. Because you can get some good money on a on a card that grades well and is highly desirable. Alright, so I picked through, I found some additional girls for you, mister, just like you requested. did a bunch of cleaning today the room's much more organized sean said he would buy the rillaboom 
Oh, very cool, Mr. Sean. Thank you. And here's Brandon Canella. Hello, Brandon. Brandon, I got all your hollows here. He says, thank you, mister. And here's your two secret rares, or whatever they are, <laughs> super rares. I really like the way they look. I really think you should grade those in particular. If there's only two per box, that's the sign that they're meant to be graded. You know, those are the rare ones. All right, now Brandon requested live shipping. You got it, Mr. Brandon. Dude, my computer's crashing so much, it crashed today. Oh, no. Here we are, Mr. Brandon Canella. You have a P.O. box. And we're going to print label. Print! So tonight, we can't have another uh, five-hour live stream. I definitely hurt my back yesterday night because if you sit too long in the exact same position, this actually is bad for your back. It actually hurts it. And so I have back pain today because I sat too long yesterday. So today, I hope to uh, maybe take a break or two in the middle of the live stream and probably not go for five hours. Maybe just go for three hours tonight. You know, that's the typical three hours. All right, let's get this live ship. I got some fresh shipping boxes. I was just mentioning, those are expensive. Those nice white boxes I send you guys, be sure not to put them to waste because you save them and use them to ship your own cards one day. And uh, man, they add up when you use a lot of them. They add up real fast. Mr. Woohoo! Mailman saw all the mail going out today. They're like, what the? I'm like, yup. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do I stop this from tilting over? Okay, so next up, let's see who's next. Mr. William Valls wants two. Jeff Black, you got it, William. Mr. William. Yeah, you can buy into the waiting list and we open up all of the cosmic the moment the waiting list is full. If it does not fill up, we open it at the end of the stream. Okay? So William Balls, cold. And, ah, oh, Celebi VMAX in two packs, William. Hey, that's not too bad. Selling pokies is like selling your soul. That's right. You should only keep them. Like me. <laughs> Jedediah Rice. He says, I'll take the PSA 10 Secret Rare Rillaboom. Okay. So I actually had three of them, which is why he is for sale. And since this is the advertised one, what we're going to do is a little swap. You're going to get this one. And the next one goes into this little holder. Okay, so you get the one that you saw. And we're going to put your name on the back. Did he say with live shipping? And live shipping. Jedediah. Live shipping already? Wait, I don't need to write your name up, down. Well, I'm happy you're live shipping because you've got a bag in a very full box. So this should free up a little bit of room. Ah, here we are, Mr. Jedediah. All right, excellent. There it is. Cosmic Eclipse being sold. That's right. So just for tonight, though, 
and tomorrow night it might be something else or it might be nothing those are daily specials it's a new thing we will have daily special now all right so this is our first time shipping to you mr jedediah let me go ahead and take a quick look at your address all right thank you for confirming it get this label printed Oops, come on now. And print. What's the price on Cosmic? What is the price on Cosmic? Oh, uh, it's listed in the description. All right, I'll be right back. Would this be the way you would be offering items like Shining let, yes, that's exactly right. No longer one pack at a time, and only on reserve lists. That'll be the new way. Now, do I have... I guess I should grab some of these, recycle as much cardboard and and bubble wrap as I can so I'm always trying to reuse what, what's available I hate the idea that this all goes into some landfill don't you no landfills are allowed such a waste Gonna die in your lab shipped. Sweet. Let's see who's next. Thank you for my first slab, mister, and I'll for sure be ordering more in the future. Thanks, Rick. Let's see who's next. Estuardo, he says one cosmic. So what we need is a a list. that I can update throughout the live stream. <laughs> it could be a little bit of a longer name, huh? Cool. And uh, let's attach all three of these, actually. Oh, my bad. Pen not wanting to cooperate. A bit annoying, isn't it? I'm new here, and I was told you give away Pokemon cards. Is this true? That is true. Tonight, there is a giveaway for two lovely slabs. The instructions are at the beginning of the description, so be sure to check that out. These two are, are being given away. How's it going, Tammy? Brian Ochoa says, he says, I'm back. One Phantom Rage box. Ooh. Do I still have Phantom Rage? Let's start there. I do. I have, uh, how much Phantom Rage do I have? I think I have a few boxes. I think I'm almost out of the Blazing Vortex. Yes, I got two boxes of the Blazing Vortex left, and then it's gone. All right. Looks like a Yugi stream tonight. What? We are just started. I'm sure we'll see lots and lots of cards. People just know that the Yugi's are a really good deal because I'm selling them to get rid of them. All right. What do you think, Kitty? Sleep. I think that these Yu-Gi-Oh packs were the worst performing on the channel. 
It's almost at retail now. It's it's better than retail, I'm pretty sure. How much do these cost in a Walmart or a Target per pack? Anyone wanna, anyone know? The Starlight cards are worth pulling. I know, I hope you guys pull one. I'll be very happy for you if you do. Mister, what is the status of the large custom booster? How's it going? I think there's five spots sold in it so far. Connor says about 3.5. Oh, okay. 3.5. No, you're right. It's about retail. I thought they were a little more. Sneep. Sneep. And. Sneep. All right. They are a gazillion at Walmart. What? Good luck to Brian Ochoa. You ready, Brian? Okay, as usual, we want one of those extremely rare Starlight Rares. I think we've pulled... Have we pulled two of them on this channel? I think we've pulled two Starlight Rares ever. Here's Alpha, the Master of Beasts. Wow, we've pulled three of these. Excellent. Very good. I like that card. Can't tell if my dog is pregnant or if she's just fat. Definitely just fat, but also pregnant. Conductor of Nephesis. Here's Joyous Melfi's. Hey, I have that card. Goes for 30. Really? That one? Yeah, he looks super awesome. Here's My Utent Beast again. No Blue Eyes in this set? Blue Eyes is in Maximum Gold. He's not in here. Is he in Ghost of the Past? I don't even know it's in Ghost of the Past. Ghost of the Past never gets open on this channel. It's been open like a few times. I really thought there would be a bit more hype for it, but apparently not. Apparently not that much hype. Ah, Virtual World Kaiyubi. Here you go, mister. Kitty is here. She's up on the uh, shipping desk. I don't know what she's doing up there. What are you doing up there, Kitty? Hey. I'm a little worried. I got a drink up there. Oh, man. She could knock that drink over, and that would be a big problem. Hey. Oh, man. She doesn't care. The other cat cares about loud noises, not this one. Oh, there she goes. She's backing away. <laughs> She's like, oh, shoot. He's going to get me. Goddamn kitties. Trying to mess everything up. I hope that clapping wasn't too loud. When people found out how hard it is to pull, they lost interest. Really interesting. You might be right. They might have said, you know what? My odds are too low. We've got Virtual World City. Here's Rock Band Zeno Guitar. Uh, whoever that guy is, Powered Kong Yo. Infernity Doom Archfiend. Okay. Mr. Ochoa, thank you for opening up a box. You got that lovely Alpha. Alpha Beast. Alpha Chad. Brian says, damn, no Zeus. I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> now, Mr. Brian, do you remember where we put your bag last? That's an up top, up top box. Let's see. How about this up top box? Oh, some more news. Oh, here's Brian. Some more news. We have Shining Fates again. Shining Fates is in. Shining Fates has returned. Yu-Gi-Oh! names sound like they're made on the spot. Maybe. <laughs> Why only 24 spots for Cosmic? Uh, because this is from an already open box that we had opened uh, when we would sell Cosmic the old way, just a pack at a time to whoever wanted it. So we have to get rid of that box, and there's only 24 spots. All right. Mr. should get Yugi's Genesis Impact. It's a waifu set. All right, I'm doing it. Now we have Mr. Mike's side. He says one spot in the Cosmic. You got it, Mr. Mike's side. Two. Mr. M M uh, Mike side. I got an ultra ball. I didn't even notice. 
Next up, we have Dan Newman. He says, six Don Russ basketball for me, mister. Bags on the table. How's it going, Dan? He wants six of these, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. You ready? All right. You ordered Cosmic. Oh, very cool. One, two, three, four, and five, six. Sweet. Good luck to Dan Newman. All right, so these are very different from hoops right away. You can tell the design's very different. And you guys should help me out and help me understand if any of the bulk is worth more than a dollar. And let's find out if we can understand the hits in here. Miles Turner, Mike Conley, Paul, Eric, Aaron. Okay, so that immediately looks like a the valuable card in the pack. Malcolm Brogdon, huh? And I don't recognize this guy at all from the blaster packs, the uh, hoops packs. Hmm. Okay. And how about these back here? We've got Malakin Flynn. This is rated rookie. Is that what it says? RJ Hampton. So this is my first time opening Don Russ, and I am officially starting to learn about Don Russ. This says rated rookie. Do you think PSA will hurt themselves from closing down, then reopening, because everyone would flood PSA with the submissions? I have no idea, actually. The hits are pretty much the same in, like, hoops. Oh, okay, so it's designed the same way. Well, that makes sense, copying each other. Here's Mark. Uh, they have the upside-down cards, too, huh? <laughs> so we got some upside-down cards. Derek, Kevin Huerter, Jamal Murray. Here's Giannis and Teto Conan... How? I can't say his name at all. <laughs> it's a very long name. And then for your rook rated rookies, we have Isaiah Stewart and Alexej. I recognize Alexej. It's LaMelo. What? I think all sports have upside-down cards. Giannis is solid. Oops. Okay, we got Wesley, Marquez, Danilo, Luka Donick, Marcus Smart, and Aaron Nesmith. Okay. Very interesting. Over here for your rookies, you've got Casius and Jemias. Only real difference is the inserts and parallels. Lamelo is a dud like Alonzo. They're better off trading him. Luca, depending on the card, those go high in PSA. Here we go, Luca. Here we go, it's Luca. Next up, in pack number 20, we got Brooke, Doug, Anis, OG, Fred, Kembra. Is Kembra. Kembra sounds kind of like a Ken doll name, you know what I mean? It's Barbie and Kembra. Here's Jordan and Theo Meldon. Lucas scored 44 points tonight. Is Nogla here? Someone says, hi, Nogla. Set this over here. All right, next pack, we've got TJ Warren, Draymond. Did that pop up very quickly? Oh, that was like a small pack, basically. Huh, weird. DeMar DeRozan. And we've got Nick Richards and Trey Jones. Sweet! Huh, I wonder why that pack was so small. Definitely had fewer uh, cards in it. Okay, and this is your pack number six, right? Pack number six feels a little thicker than the other pack. Hmm. Here's Toreen, Tobias, Andrew. Can you say hoops? Hoops. Lonzo. And what is this? Anthony Edwards. Great expectations. I noticed that corner looked white, even though uh, we handled the card very carefully. Mister, you need to get LaMelo or Anthony Edwards. Sounds good. Nogla said on Twitter a few days ago he's taking a break. From pokies? There's no taking breaks from pokies. Uh-uh. The only thing you're allowed to do with pokies is open, 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 open. Come on. 
All right, Mr. Dan Newman, let's find your bag. Where's Michael Jordan? <laughs> Michael Jordan was really good. Hornets better trade him while he still has value. Damn, listen to these guys talk. <laughs> He's going to suck in, a, in the next round. <laughs> Best card there is is Anthony Edwards, like 30 bucks. Really? That's it? Just 30 Seems kind of low compared to, like, Pokemon. All right, your bag's too large now. We're going to go ahead and place it in the D-Box. Anthony for R-O-T-Y. All right, next up, we've got Eddie Petty, who says, One Don Russ. You got it, Mr. Eddie. I know you need a new bag. One Don Russ. And uh, let me get some more Petty sleeves, actually. Graded, they go for a few hundred. Okay. Give me that OJ card. Oh. Time to sneep. Sneep. <laughs> there we go. Dennis, JJ Reddick, Terry, Nicola, Eric Gordon, Robert Covington... Zeke N uh, Naji and Sadiq. Oh man, I've seen a bit too much Sadiq at this point. Mister, what new card are you thinking of selling? Could you be more specific? Are you talking about what new set, like sealed product, or are you talking about what new graded card? What do you mean by that? All right, there you go, Mister Eddie Petty. What do I do with these? I guess I just sent them over here. Go ahead and get your fresh bag. Mister, do you use Google Pay? I do not use Google Pay. I use PayPal. I use PayPal. Maybe in the future. I talked to my wife. I told her maybe it's time to get a... Maybe it's time to get a website running that will take payment from anything and then just have the accountant keep an eye on that uh, the website. And the website will gather data. We've been running this live stream in a very low-tech way, really. It's kind of a nice thing. All right, next up, we've got to refresh. Sweet. I was just learning about staking, by the way. Staking uh, in crypto. Staking is when you commit to lock up a portion of your cryptocurrency, and you're paid to do this. And they, they have you do this because they want to be able to not have to do as much mining while people transact in that crypto. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's kind of interesting because, it, you know, it's all about avoiding those miner fees. And the mining fees are so high right now, it seems. What camera do you use? Nokia 1970? That's right. And I only talk about cameras when it benefits me. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got next. We've got Dan Newman, Eddie Petty, Javier Arroyo, who says, Too Cosmic. You got it, mister. You'll stake your pokies. All right, there's Javier. Mister, stake me. You got it, baby. David Correa says, can I have two of those Don Russ NBA packs? You got it. Two Don Russ. For David Correa. You ready, David? Mr. David. Sneep. Twist my pokies. We've got Ruby, Rudy, Eric, Donovan, Chris Stops. Hassan, oops, they're kind of sliding down. Here's Isaiah Stewart, rookie, Elijah Hughes, and Robert Woodard. Ooh. Set this down, and we'll set this one down. And we'll set this one down as well. Next pack, Cody Zeller. Oh, my Lord. We've got Cody Zeller, Devon. Oh, you just pulled one of the jersey cards. So Don Russ does the same thing with the jersey cards. Okay, let me go ahead and sleeve this up. Boop. 
Here's Donovan Mitchell. Mr. Donovan Mitchell, wow. And now you have two rookie cards, Aaron Nesmith and Killian Hayes. Ooh. All right, let me go ahead and place this over here. That's all for you, Mr. David Korea. Thank you, and I have a bag. Let's go find Mr. David's bag. Mr. David. Rick and Morty. <laughs> Is there a Rick and Morty card set? Diego. He says I have a bag. Let's find out where his bag is. Why do I feel like you're over on the right or something? Jacob Kai's on the right. So we are having a problem where we have too many large bags at this point. And the large bags do not... Hey, look at this. I just found an Eddie Petty bag. The large bags are not sorted the way the small bags are sorted. So when we have too many large bags, it takes forever to find anything in them. Blastoise lives matter. <laughs> I guess that's another use of the word BLM. Your cough is over here. Okay, so I found your cough. Richard, Adam Sharp, Michael Cusick is over there. Who's this? John Gamia. Ah, yes, John Gamia. Luke Charlton. Ah, yes, Luke Charlton. So now I know who's on the right. But we're not done searching the old regular. Here's David Korea. All right, thank you, David, and congratulations on pulling that jersey card from Mo Bamba. It's Mo Bamba. Okay, we'll set that back, and we'll set this one, this other one back, the Kelby pack. He says, thank you, mister, no problem. Next up, we've got Micah Hoover. He says, four XY Evos and two Cosmic. Been gone for a bit, but I have a bag. Welcome back, Mr. Mike Hoover. Mike Hoover. All right, very cool. He also wants the four XYs. Let's get those for you in a moment. So we got those evolutions and some over here as well. Blastoise for president. Uh-uh. Blastoise puts out mean tweets. And I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of mean tweets. I say we ban Blastoise. I keep evolutions on the table because it actually sells that often. So here we go. Evolutions. Good luck to Mike Hoover. Mr. Mike, you ready? Who's the moderator for tonight? Do we have moderators? Sneep. What's up, Snorlax V? What's up, Alex? You guys have permission to mute anyone spamming, okay? Here's Dodo and Chansey. Oh. Let's see. Here's Chansey. And here's Dodo. You're on vacation and moderating. Mister, you better be swimming in the ocean. Let's see what's next. Oh, man. I opened it straight ways. Machop, Weedle, Dodo, Staryu, Onyx, Metapod. Here is that secret rare executor. Ooh. Okay, we'll set that down, and we'll sleeve up the Metapod as well. Next pack. Here's Weedle, Dodo, Staryu, Onyx, Ghastly, and Mewtwo. Wow, look at these nice cards. I'm actually a fan of the Mewtwo EX. That actually looks really nice. Next pack. We don't give the EX cards enough credit. Machop, Nidoran, Ponita, Drowsy, Switch, and another Mewtwo. You're picking up double Mewtwo's, mister. 
All right. That's all for you, Mr. Mike Hoover. And Mr. Mike will be opening up those Cosmics after all 22, uh, 24 of them sell or at the end of the live stream. Go ahead and fix that. Sweet. Mike with an M. Let's see. He says, been gone for a bit, but I have a bag. So we'll go do a deep search for Mr. Mike Hoover. Ooh. Oasis, Michael, Nurses. We got Nick Mitchell, Nick Nicholas, Matt Vey, Michael Higman. Hmm. That's not Mr. Hoover. Here's Mike Spanos, Mario, Marcos, Oscar, Matthew, Martin, Martin, Matthew, Mason, Matt, Meadows, Melissa. We're looking for Mr. Hoover. Mike Lim, Mashud, Nash Coward, Manuel Rodriguez. Okay, not in there. How about this one? Defund Blastoise. He's been using his water guns at BLM events. Oh, my God. Here it is. It's Mike Hoover. Mike Hoover, you already had the Mewtwo EX. Oh, my. <laughs> this is too funny, guys. He already pulled the Mewtwo EX, so now he has three of them. Guess you can send them all into grade and uh, try to sell any tens. Oh, my Lord. Okay, let's see what's next. John Gamia. John Gamia says, What's poppin', mister? Can I get one cosmic and five sword and shield base set? You sure can. That's for Mr. John Gamia. Mr. Fear. Okay. Five sword and shield base set. Let me sneak them open. Kara says, can you replace my two Cosmic for 11 Silver Lands? Absolutely. All right, one, two, three, four, five. People always sleep on the base sets. Yeah, maybe it's because base set's like a really boring name. All right, Mr. Gamia, good luck. Sneak, one, two. Three, four, and five. Two ducks. Sweet. Whack. Kitties, do ducks make cheese? Pack number one is Sandaconda Cramorant. Thank you and the chat for the entertainment. No problem. Mister, I need me a bad jinx. You need a bad jinx. Get me that Pokemon. But, sir... Here's Sizzlepeed. Here's Chin Chow. And here's Rhyhorn. You did it, Mr. John Gamio. All right, let's go ahead and sleep it up. Boop. John Gamio, I know exactly where your bag is because I just looked. <laughs> You're right here. I was just going through all the overflow when I ran across a Mr. John Gamia. Wow, your bag's really large now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, Kara Nichols would like two Shining Fates and 11 Silver Lamps. Let's get those 11 Silver Lamps. Oh, that's squeaky. Imagine thinking all the packs come from booster boxes. I know. Let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Roxa says read the rest of the order. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss something? Can I get one cosmic, five sword and shield base, and one super supreme rivalry? Oh, mister, I missed that part. I'm sorry. <laughs> so hold on. Um, let's set these to the side. These are for Kara. And we need to get you a Supreme Rival. You'll be the first one to open it. Mister, I ordered another thing. You sure did. Let's go ahead and get that open. I'm very interested. We'll toss this over here. Throw this little thing away. 
And one pack of Supreme Rivals. Supreme Rivals, huh? Good luck, Mr. John Gamilla. Let's see what you pull. Who you got, guys? Oh, I'm betting everything on Logan Paul. I'm betting all Charizards on him. Okay, we jump to the end. And here's a booby girl. Her name is Demon God Toa, Offering of the Dark Dragon Balls. That's a common. And Bulma, Hope for a Better Future. Sweet! Let's go 2021 and new Pokemon stuff. Mayweather wins easy. I'm rooting for the underdog. He got a jet ski, so he only gets jet ski skanks now. <laughs> what? What does that even mean? Is that different from boat babes? <laughs> Jumping back to Kara Nichols, we have the Silver Lance. Ah. And we need two shiny fates, which means I need... Where did my silver... Oh, I moved them all. Where did I move them all to? I moved them all behind me. All right, give me a moment. Oh, set these on the floor. I don't think this chair can get any more squeaky. Norlex has another girl in Jennifer. What? Someone paid over 80000 for three tickets for Logan Paul. Lol, that's a boat babe there. I know. You could get so many boat babes with that kind of money. Wait, what? How are we defining boat babe? All right, that's a fresh box of shiny fates. Oh man, the sound of this chair is even starting to bother me. It really is that loud. It's like running an engine on a machine, just constant. Okay, so two of these, the rest will go up top. We need the Tyranitar triggered emoji. That's true. I could have bought a PSA 8 first edition, first edition Charizard for 80K. Well, it's a good thing you guys weren't buying first edition Charizards because, man, the prices on those really came down. I think after that Logan Paul hype, people were like, all right, time to do something else. Sneep. Do you only have 24 Cosmic left? Uh, no, I have a, an enormous amount of Cosmic. I'm selling 24 tonight. Good luck, Miss Kara. Cosmic might be the set I have the most of. Because I really, really like Cosmic. Cosmic and Evolutions. Those are the two sets I have the most of. We've got... Oh! Gardevoir! How are you doing tonight? I hope well. I am doing well. Ooh! Take a look at this. You're going to like this. It's the Toro Teal Girl. I don't remember her name. She's got... Flannery? Is it Flannery? Hyper Rare Flannery. Mister, are you into Japanese promos? I sure am when they look nice. Here's Santa Conda. And a cold pack. Brian's going, wow. <laughs> Flannery? She's got such crazy hair. It's the Brony card. Mister, I have an eBay store and Amazon seller. No one working for the big guys. <laughs> oh, a very nice box. This was a box with a double hit, huh? Cold. Here's Shining Fates. Dreadnought. And more Pekka. So the Shining Fates were a little cold, though. But that's all right. I don't think you mind. Okay, and I'll go ahead and toss this off to the side. Whoop. And this goes to Kara Nichols. Cosmic Eclipse is a great set since Dungeon Eye went super deep. It's Jennifer. What's up, Jennifer? How's it going? Okay. It's Dutch. Dutch was the name I couldn't remember. Remember I said the, the name of a guy with the letter D in his name. It was Dutch. Dutch was the guy who got all of the hyper rares out of... He got like four or five of them out of one box of Cosmic. It was really bizarre. 
So Richard Johnson says, Hello, Mr. I have a bag. I would like two cosmic, one live, and live shipping, please. Minus my ball hat guy and Karen for Mike, our trade for 12 matches in exchange. Oh my God, why do you have to give me like the most complicated message ever? So let me, let me break it down. He wants two cosmic. All right, two cosmic. I should just say no trades allowed. <laughs> I'm always on the edge of saying we don't do trades on this channel. Richard Johnson. Just be like, when they get to your home, trade them there. <laughs> All right, Richard, you're in the Cosmic. And he says a live. Let's get you a live pack. So the very first live pack is these two lovely boosters. He also wants a live ship. Okay, so let's open these up before we get that far. Sneep. Push up B, plus, plus, start, select, back, forth, A. <laughs> Motrez, shiny Cursola, all right, and ditto V, Max. Not bad, not bad. You like your room from Pokemon? Oh, thanks, man. Uh, my plan is to make it much nicer in here. Maybe get some different lighting. Okay, now he wants live shipping. For Mr. Richard Johnson, let's find. Let's start by finding his bag. How about that? Ryan, Ramiro, Ran, Russ. Nobody's behind these guys. So is he in the top box? Then let's see. Doo doo be doo. Raul, man, I'm still tired from yesterday. My brain's like, woo. We opened so many pokies together. Richard, did we place you in an overflow? Time is it for you? Uh, 50 bazillion o'clock. Poke Kobe. Now, nothing's behind Poke Kobe. So, this has to be an overflow bag. Yes, here we go. Richard Johnson. <laughs> Should have looked there first. Okay, so he said leaves, leave Karen... And leave what? Ball hat guy? Okay, ball hat guy and Karen. For Mark. For Mike, our trade is for 12 matchless in exchange. So it sounds like these need to go to some guy named Mike, and I need to get you 12 matchless. That's what that sounds like. He said 12 of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Really? You only took 12 matchless for... So think about this. These are two confirmed hits. These will be a, a pull rate of about 1 in 30 each. So together it's about, you know, 2 in 60. Or, no, that's not the right way to think of it. Um, but yeah, you'll get about one of these pulls every 30 packs. Now think about this. You're giving these two uh, cards away for just 12 of these i mean i'll offer you a whole box if you want to do the trade with me he he's definitely under trading you if you're only getting 12 packs of matchless for two actual hits uh that's like i gotta i gotta offer some advice you're 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 giving away the um you're you're giving away the farm or something <laughs> i don't know what the saying goes yeah i'll offer you a whole box of matchless for these two cards if you're trying to get rid of them Poke Kobe. Poke Kobe is an awesome guy. I like Poke Kobe. I'm trying to get rid of my Clara, too. Your Clara? Really? You're trying to get rid of Clara? I don't know if Richard uh, Johnson is still watching. So, uh, I, but I mean, two pulls. The very best you could do in a box of Japanese is to get two pulls, and it's actually not that common. He says, I'll stay with Mike. You got it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me get the last two packs. You got a fat stack, Mr. Brian. He says, I'll trade you one whole matchless pack. Jeez, you're too generous. 
Oh, did the music just stop? Okay, sneep. And sneep. Has Mike paid for them though? Oh, I better double check that before we actually start opening them. I'm sure he did though, because it's such a it's such a imbalanced trade. I don't know why he wouldn't. Let me go ahead and refresh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get back on the list. You're right though, we do have to check first. Mike, Mike's side mister was gonna snipe. Oh, this is with Miguel, give me a moment. Let's see, well Miguel, you did snipe. Are you sure it wasn't for Michael Cusick? Toro Teal and I have made a trade. Just finished trading with Richard Johnson. He wants 12 matchless for Ball Guy and Karen. All right, so this is this goes to Michael Cusick. Speaking of which, where is Michael Cusick? Here we go. So Michael Cusick did pay for the matchless fighter. All right, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get these 12 packs open now. I'm telling you, these trades get so complicated. Good luck, Mr. Richard. Pack number one is cold. Pack number two is thunderous. So we're hoping to pull a secret rare or hyper rare to replace your your two, your hyper rare and secret rare. So here's Blaziken. Ooh. Black Lives Matter leader resigns over real estate scandal. Really? Maybe she's resigning and basically retiring. Like, if she's got a nice house now, maybe she's like, all right. <laughs> Now I'm top. Now I'm part of the one percent. If you're buying a mansion, <clears throat> excuse me. Cold. You got Dracovish. All right, and and a cold one. Mister Richard Johnson, I'll go ahead and get you live ship. Did you have any slabs, Mister? Can't use the adjective I want to use to describe that trend. She bought multiple million dollar estates in the burbs. All right. I'll go ahead and slide these in here, mister. Used money from foundation to buy four private homes. Oh, I see what you're saying. What? All right. Mr. Richard Johnson. Let me get that address. And the lesson we've already shipped. Let's see if we've already shipped you. All right, and your cards are on the way. I noticed I, I I didn't hit the button that sends you a tracking number to your email, so I apologize you've got no tracking number, but I promise it is on the way. And it'll arrive, probably it'll arrive like Tuesday or something. I'm a happily married man, Kitty. Amazon made mental help cubicles for their warehouse workers. What? I just got a Coinbase order. Whoever just sent the uh, ETH. Show Kitty. You're right. We should show off Kitty. Oops. Let me know who, who you are, whoever it is that just sent that uh, Ethereum. Okay, so Kitty, Kitty's over here. Hey, that's Kitty. Mr. Connor, how's it going, Connor? And Mr. Connor Gillespie, uh, Gillespie, you can let me know what it is you were ordering. And I'll write it down. What's your take on Israel-Palestine? Uh, they're in a holy war, and they probably always will be. And uh, I don't want to have to ship United States tax dollars over to repair their constantly crumbling buildings that they're always blown up and supply them with new weapons and blah, blah, blah. It's like it never stops. Connor Gillespie. Accidental face reveal. That's right. I would never want you guys to see my face. Try to fix the camera there. Sweet. Cover 19 is pretty much confirmed that it was made in a Chinese lab and is not natural occurring. I knew it. Kitty, I feel like... 
I feel like I'm 100% smarter because I believed the conspiracy the whole time. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Richard Johnson. We have Michael Cusick makes a trade with Toro Teal. He says, give Toro Teal nine matchless for the bird keeper. For my, oh, nine matchless and my bird keeper for the Clara. Okay, so give me a moment. Mr. Michael out here trying to make some trades. Someone doesn't follow Mr. on TikToks. When is the last sickness that had a side effect of making you lose smell and taste? Good question. So he says, I don't need the bird keeper, boop, but I would like the Clara. Old Mr. would deny these traits. Old Mr., that's right. In the past, when it came to trading, I would actually charge people for, for going through with the trade. But, you know, trades are pretty rare, so I, I, I just kind of go, oh, whatever. I hate trades. They drive me nuts. Trades are, uh, they're like extra work. <laughs> and they're always so confusing. And you can actually get a lot done. Wow. I, look, I went looking for this Gengar, and I could not find it. I couldn't find it at all. I couldn't find, like, PSA 9. I couldn't find PSA 8. So hold on to that. That's a very cool card. So here's the trade. There's the Clara. Now you take the uh, you take the bird keeper, so bird keeper is yours. And Michael Cusick, see how much work this is. Like we could just be shredding packs open, like crazy in the same period of time. So you got all these people waiting for their cards to be opened, and instead we're very carefully handling these cards and locating bags. But you know, again, it doesn't happen very often, so it's not that big of a deal. All right, nine packs of, he said matchless, right? Nine packs of matchless. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. This is for Toro Teal. Hate is a nice word. I'm sorry. I, I meant I, f I feel conflicted. Uh, what I mean to say is doing a trade makes me feel time oppressed. Oppre time oppressed. And I need time equity. Thanks, mister. You're a good guy. No problem, Toro Teal. All right, let's see what we got. It's Blaziken. Blaziken V. Cold. Here's Slow King. Sweet. Wait, Mr. Connor ordered. Ah, okay, but Mr. Connor will actually go last. That's how it works when you do an order in Ethereum. You get added to the list, basically. So we've got Inteleon. Mr. Connor, you want to repeat the order? And, oh, and Beedrill. If Biden gets his $6 trillion budget graded cards, we'll go to the moon. I think you're right. Well, I don't know if they'll go to the moon, but it's like all this money printing can't be good. 12 matchless and 4 sun and moon base set. Okay. 12 matchless and, and sun and moon base set. Is that what he said? 4 SM base set. Alright, so Connor gets put in line with this card now. And when it's his turn, we open these up. All right. Sweet. If Biden gets his $6 trillion bill passed, inflation will be insane, says Philippe. I just need Zapdos V, and I have all of the non-secret rares. Wow, wow, wow. I want to order an ETH, too. Kind of. <laughs> Next up, we've got Jeremy Helmstatter. Welcome back, Jeremy. He wants four live customs and live shipping. I have two bags, and I believe I have two slaps. Oh, man, that's a big one. Uh, okay, well, let's get started. How about that? Let's get started. So I don't know if you have two bags, but you have one very large bag. It is possible you have a second bag, though. Sometimes when a bag is really large like that, I start a fresh one because I don't want to handle the... Uh, a bag this large, it, it's actually a risk to handle it too much. In the off chance that it gets dropped... You would be dropping a ton of cards rather than just a few. And also, they'd all be heavier with each other's weight. 
Jacob Hill, Jason James, Javier, Jesus. We're looking for a second back for you, though. Jeremy Melendez, <laughs> Jack Bello, Jesse Perez. We might have combined it. All right, you weren't in that JE box. You could still be up here, though. Jesse Salinas, Kyle, John Fang, Jason, Liam. Nothing's behind Liam. Okay, so I didn't see another bag for you, but I'll keep my eyes open in the case that maybe you add two bulk bag or two uh, overflow bags. I guess that's possible too, but I don't remember a second overflow bag for you. Four live customs. Okay, four live customs. Let's see what you pull. Pack number one. Ryolu, pack number two. Oh, what's this? Four General Mills. Pack number three, Tangela, and pack number four, Poiple. So this is a case where you would have been better off if you had fewer packs or if you had gone much deeper. You're going to end up with four General Mills, but you're still going past one of the hit cards. And I tell you what, Jeremy... We're about to take General Mills off the menu. I'm going to toss you an extra General Mills, even though that will end up being a loss for me. But you got such a large bag, I can't help myself because you've opened an awful lot of cards on this table. All right, so five packs for you, Mr. Jeremy Holmstadter. I hope you get the Galarian Ponita. You ready? Sneep. Sneep. And sneep. Okay, cool. You pull. Here's Pikachu. Oh my gosh. He pulled Pikachu, guys. Pack number two. Pikachu. Shiba is a pump and dump like Doge. <laughs> It's a hustle. Here's a third Pikachu. Why are you pulling all the Pikachus, man? My second bag has a Tops pack in it. Oh, thank you. I think I know where it's at then. Here's more Peko and another Pikachu. And finally, boop, Pikachu Hatena. Very nice. I know what you're talking about. You're correct. There's just so many orders going on that it's easy to forget. Question is, where did I put that? All right, give me a moment. So I would have figured you'd be right here, but you're not. I wonder if I would have put you into... There's Jacob Kai. Yakov... Michael Cusick. I totally remember that order. I just don't know where it's at. Jeremy Helmstauder. Wait, I didn't say... I, I didn't mean to say that. I meant Luke Charlton. Did I say Jeremy Helmstauder out loud? Raphael. James Gower. I'm looking... For a second bag for Jeremy Helmstadter, I have no clue where we put it. Let's put your cough back real fast. When Sheba does pump, I'll be paid. I want to get paid. Everyone's a crypto expert but me. Wish I was a crypto expert like everyone else. I don't know where I put it. I likely put it somewhere very easy to find. It makes you wonder, why wouldn't you be in either of the... Oh! <laughs> Helmstatter. See that with the H? Helmstatter? I put you into the GHI box. There you go. <laughs> you got flying Pikachu. That's so nice. I put you in the GHI box. Oh, my lord. Because I didn't write your first name down. I'm such a I'm such a goof, man. All right, so they're all there now. And you said you had two slabs as well. I'm wondering if one of them is for tonight. No, it's not. All right, let me go ahead and get that printer running. Jeremy. 
Jeremy Helmstatter with an address beginning with 59. How do you feel about Cedra's Gluck Gluck game, mister? It's such good luck. It makes me scream, what the Gluck? All right, I'll be back. I'm going to look at two slabs, and I'm actually going to pack this up after the live stream. We have your label prepared, though. Let's find your two slabs. I found that packing up the cards after the live stream is actually a much safer method of packing because there's no there's no pressure to go as fast as you can, and this allows you to just be a little more organized. That's especially useful on oddly shaped boxes, and anyone with a lot of cards has an oddly shaped box. However, this is good that I'm standing. Oh, you had a third slab. Aha! I found three. Let me make sure, okay? Alright. So, three slabs. Alright, I'll ship them out to you without telling you what they are, so that is a surprise, since you didn't remember the third one. Wow, thank you so much for how deep you went, Mr. Jeremy Helmstatter. That'd be very cool to get that ship. Your label's made and you're ready to go. Okay, next up, Xavier Larios. He wants five battle styles. I have a bag. How's it going, Xavier? Thanks for your patience as we're getting over to your order. Mr. Egg Xavier. We got one, two. And three, four, snip, and five, snip. Mr. Xavier picking up Cheryl, Buffalon, and Urshifu. Ooh. What else do we have? We've got Spoink and Age of Slash. Sweet. Here's Fomantis and Vivalon or Beetle. That's a lot of hollows, mister. Let me find your bag. Is the Cosmic Eclipse list full? Not yet, but it is moving pretty fast. Here we are. Xavier Larios. Larios? Sweet. What's the large at? Uh, that's a good question. I believe it's only at five. Next up, we've got Wesley Ferguson. 18 packs of Battle Styles. Not a bad choice. Battle Styles is a pretty good price right now. Having, a, over my, having over my sophisticated friends tomorrow for a rave, I have to hide all my pokies so they don't think I'm a loser. <laughs> oh my god. One, two... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Just tell them you're, you're an intelligent millennial investor. Be like, oh yeah, I'm investing in Pokemon cards. Tell them Pokemon cards have appreciated by like times 40 or something. Yeah, my Pokies appreciated faster than Bitcoin. Tell them you're, they're your girlfriend's collection. If he's having friends over, it's very questionable if he's got a girlfriend because girlfriends don't let you have girl, uh, friends over. Girlfriends tell you, I'm your friend now. Who hasn't taken a bath in a month? Um, oh my God. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, cool. Are you ready, Mr. Wesley? I'm ready. What scenarios do you think Pokemon will spike again? Uh, okay, so Logan Paul could do another box break anytime he wants. He's a he's a bit of a celebrity. He's got a lot of attention. You know he's sitting on a lot more of those boxes, right? 
So it's not like he, he only opened up one, didn't he? So he opened up a total of two, but he only opened up one after he bought all those other boxes. So it's quite possible he opens up another box in order to, to cash in. And this would get this would get him a lot of attention, but I don't think he would do it right away. I think he would do it like a year later. The other thing he could do is open a different kind of box. So that would be interesting if he did a different kind of box. Uh, another another scenario is another popular YouTuber, similar to Logan Paul, uh, gets into card collecting. And that's just a matter of time, in my opinion. Wow, great start. You got the Cheryl Full Art, and it looks really well-centered. That's a hit, mister. I think you just made money on that card. These upcoming sets will bring a lot of hype. The Full Arts are going to be very sought after, hopefully. Uh, okay, here's Slowbro. Another Stimmy check will do it. Well, okay, yeah, st stimulus checks uh, do appear to stimulate the pokey economy because people take that extra money, especially people who didn't need the money. They take that extra money and they just throw it right into their favorite hobby, which is Pokemon cards. So when the stim checks came out last time, 1400 my sales of Pokemon cards literally doubled. I mean, it just right through the roof, just blew up. And, oh, how's this Entei looking? He's a little thin on the right. That's too bad. So the stim checks cause people to buy Pokemon cards. And honestly, I see it as like a kind of inflation, right? Everyone just got free money. They didn't, they didn't earn it. They didn't make a product themselves and trade it into the market. They just got all of a sudden printed money in their hands and then they ran after cards. And this will cause cards to go up in price as they get traded. Urshifu... Still no pre-orders for Evolving Skies. I, I'm not going to do pre-orders ever again. Pre-orders have all turned poor for me. So I'm never I'm never pre-ordering cards again. It's always some problem with the supplier. and Oh, they got to ship out and they take a week to ship out anyways. And Yeah, none of it matters to me. <laughs> pre-ordering is not good with Pokemon cards. Maybe it's a little better with video games. I thought video game pre-ordering people will always tell you not to pre-order with video games too but actually they at least it was consistent but pokemon cards isn't even consistent you can drop like a, a couple thousand dollars with a guy who's saying he's doing a pre-order and then he tells you later oops sorry i held on to your money for two months and no i don't have uh any of the things you thought i had i was just claiming i had it so and i get that that's because of the way pokemon cards are allocated but pre-orders consistently unimpress me they're really bad I can do so much with the money. With my capital, I can make so many good investments, and pre-orders are not one of them. All right, toss that all over there. Gonna beat your meat. I'll be 100% ordering the Switch 2. Ooh, Switch. Mister. So this is for Wesley Ferguson. Wesley, didn't you already have a large bag? Let's see. William, Zach, Zach. Okay, so if you have a bag, it's going to be down here. We got Vahan, Yakov. Wait, Yakov's got two bags? Now, hold on. Oh, because Yakov's other bag is a bulk bag. Right? Yeah, that's a bulk bag. Okay. 1993. West Donini. Here we go. Wesley Ferguson. How's it going, Wesley? So, Wesley... On the surface, it looks like you pulled no hyper, but the truth is, this card back here, the Cheryl, this is better than a hyper, if you didn't know that. When it comes to the very desirable character cards, people actually prefer for them to not be hyper rare, because when it's hyper rare, it's got the rainbow color, and you can't really see the skin of the character, you know, or the color of their eyes, or the color of their hair. So it's more desirable to get the full art version of that uh, Pokemon card. So you did quite well here. Very good, and you should, because you opened half a box. If you open half a box and didn't pull something like the Cheryl or a Hyper Rare, uh, then you would be sweeping the box for somebody else. You're going to go up top. Mr. Alex, he says one cosmic, mister, and kiss it for good luck. Smooch. What's up, FR Gaming? I'm going to marry Cheryl. Yes. Hiromi Girl is going to be a heater.
Next up, we've got Ever Treminio. He says, hey, mister, for Dragon Ball Z, supreme, supreme rivalry. I have a bag. Overflow on the bottom, I believe. Thank you. Mister, I'm a different time zone, and now I'm late to the party. I'm sorry. So he wants four of the Supreme Rivalries. This is the new set of Dragon Ball Super. Sweet. There you go. Mister doesn't say hi to me. What's up, James? Sorry, James, I didn't see you. I have a bag overflow on the bottom. Thank you. Good luck with your pulls. Snip. I don't have a live stream where I'm perfectly quiet. Snip. Mister, we'll say hi to you in two hours. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, this looks like a fancy one back here, but I'm not sure. Son Goku and what is this? It's got like texture to it almost. It says SPR. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't even know. I do not collect these, so do not judge me. Is that special rare? 23 super rare, 10 special rare, and 3 secret rare. Looks like a hit. And what is it called, by the way? Majin Buu Assault of the Agents of Destruction. All right, very cool. You're saying that's a special rare, huh? Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, also Son Goku. Can't forget about him. What's up with these long card names? I know. Dark Masked King. Very cool. He's a king, but he has a dark mask. $12 card. Very good. Android 13. Okay, Android 13. He wears gloves. Shows off his arms. And, oh, you got another crazy thing back there. What is that? So there's Son Goten and King Vegeta, Imposing Presence. Oh, it only says SR. What does that mean? <laughs> Imposing Presence. Looks very fancy. So if that's just a, if that's not a very valuable card, let me mention something. This, uh, it looks like a gilded card almost, you know what I mean, very nice. Gilding. <laughs> secret rare. So that's a very good pull then, because there's only three secret rares. Congratulations to Mr. Ever Treminio. Ever Treminio. Sweet. Super rare. Some people are saying secret. Some people are saying super. SR is super rare. Okay. So he got a super rare, and those aren't quite as rare. Sweet. Next up, we got Arturo. Welcome back, Arturo. He says five silver lanes and one Opus. All right, Opus 11. Spank my pack for extra luck. One, two, three, four, five. Secret rares are SCR. Oh, so SCR is what we're looking for. That helps explain that a bit more. All right, you ready? Sneep. Mom, he pulled a super duper rare. Mom, get in here. What do we got? We've got Tauros. That's a cold pack. Cold. Here's Santa Conda. How nice. Oops. And a cold one. All right, just the Santa Conda. How about this Soldier's Return, Opus 11? Sneep. You pull Anima. Anima is a hero. And no other crazy pulls. Here's Gentiana. She's a girl, so obviously we have to add her. All right, no crazy luck on either of the the uh, things you open this time, Mr. Arturo. Maybe you'll get them next time. <laughs> Mom, get your head out of Dad's lap and come watch Pokemon. What? Wow. Austin. Mr. Arturo, I feel like you're up top. You are up top. I love that you open these Final Fantasies. They're so fascinating. I'm a big fan, but I can't grade any of them until PSA opens. 
We really ought to ask CGC to do some other grading. Estuardo Pasquel says two Don Russ. You got it, Mr. Estuardo Pasquel. Two Don Russ. Hey, those are basketball cards. You know what's really cool on this channel is is starting to feel like I'm a just a straight up card shop, and I just carry all cards. And we just went from Pokemon to Dragon Ball to Final Fantasy to basketball. How cool is that? Andre, Evan. John Collins, LeBron James. So here's your LeBron James. So is LeBron James cards really that good? Son, don't interrupt your mother or you'll be taking her place. What the fuck? Ew, I cut those, says Alex. It's LaMelo. <laughs> so you also pull fantasy star LeBron James. Wow, you got double LeBron James. Need to get MTG then. Devin Vassal, I suppose I could. Um, you know, I don't think they grade that much magic cards, though. And I'm all into grading. And Obi Toppin. All right. So that's pack number one. How about pack number two? For Estuardo, Pasquel, Rui, Kevin Porter, Blake Griffin, Ricky Rubio, Terrence Ross. You then pull Domantis Sabanis. Wow, I'm actually going to memorize these characters' names eventually. Anthony Edwards, rookie card. That's what you guys said he's supposed to pull, right? That and the uh, the other guy. LaMelo. Anthony Edwards and Kenyon Martin. We'd be dabbling in Metapoo. <laughs> I don't know how many people would buy MTG. Yeah, good question. Did I call them characters? You know what I mean. <laughs> Anthony Edwards, sweet. Mr. Estuardo, here's your bag. Well, you got a heavy bag. Oh, you got metal cards, that's why. Very nice. Do we have room to put you up top? No. Do we have room to put you back in the e-box? Yes. Okay, so let's see. Brian Ochoa, he says one more box of Phantom Rage. You got it. Phantom Rage. And now we're getting Yu-Gi-Oh cards. How cool is this, guys? NBA is a simulation. I'm Anthony. Hello, Anthony. Mister got my order for Cosmic? I sure did. Can't believe it's still not Connor Gillespie's turn, though. Can you believe that? Connor, it'll be your turn soon enough. We haven't gotten to the end of the line yet. NBA, NFL, wigged. Jonathan says, hello, Mario. Why, hello. Sneep. So this is for our friend Brian Ochoa. Sneep. I'm good with waiting. Sneep. You know what I noticed? Ever since I stopped accepting orders that were pending, I really don't get very many pending orders at all. I almost wonder if people were intentionally abusing the pending orders. Because I think it's strange that we're not getting any. Excited for this box for real? Says FR Gaming. Sing at the an hour long wait at the moment, all worth the wait. Anthony Roberts says, could be. Oh, I'm sure some tried. Yeah, I had one guy. One guy who did the pending orders, he was real bad. He he did thousands of dollars worth of uh, pending orders that all bounced. All right, and sneep. All right, sweet. Let me go ahead and toss these over here. Boop. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, you beat me to it, Mike. Side. So here's dual avatar fists. And my utent. I waited two and a half hours last night. I'm used to it. <laughs> sometimes we're backed up, sometimes not. Uh, yesterday was really crazy, wasn't it? Everyone said, tonight's the night. I'm going to open some cards. 
My order would pend when I first started, not because of my card, but because PayPal kept verifying my real identity. Identity. Oh, you got a girl card, mister. Sweet. Damn, she's got a great personality. Let's go ahead and put this in here. Here's conductor. I gotta stop making that joke. Does that joke ever get tiring? It definitely gets tiring, right? Here's virtual world gate. Coochie. Perfect sync. Here's Guzmec or Gizmec. Here's warning point. All right, so one of your special rares came out in its warning point. Hopefully the next one's the Zeus. We want Zeus to show up. Phantom Knights. Here's dual avatar feet. Speaking of feet, let's go take a 15 minute break. I'll, I'll bring you guys with me. We'll kick, we'll kick up on the, kick our feet up on the couch. That's what I mean to say. Here's dual avatar feet. We'll watch some TV. I'll turn on this guy I know called the card economist. I'm here for the jokes, not the pokes. The jokies, not the pokies. All right, we're getting closer to the end. Still no starlight rare. Where's the starlight? You want to go on a date with your audience. That's right. This is the night, oh, the beautiful night. I need a little meatball and a little spaghetti. I'll roll it towards you guys. I get a little sauce on my nose. Do, 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 do. Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. Holy. That is a fancy looking card, mister. But that's not a Starlight Rare. Boop. And one more pack. Virtual World Bees. Jui, Jui. Jayu, Jayu. <laughs> I don't know how to say it correctly. It needs a longer name. I think it needs a longer name, too. This is how I'm going to name my children. It's just like this. Sylveon VMAX is going for 500 USD. Simps! They're all simps, mister. Pay no attention. So, Brian Ochoa, where did we put you? Here you go, Mr. Brian. And this bag's pretty large. $15 secret rare? Nice. Well, I think in grade 10, that'd be really cool. Yeah, I actually, I really like these. Do you guys see this? See how cool these look? So if that were to grade 10, uh, I almost wonder if somebody would collect that because it certainly looks cool. So Brian, you got a really huge bag and we're going to put you in here with our friend Earth Savior. He's the savior of the Earth. And we'll toss this over here now. Thank you, Brian. Next up, we've got Brian Locke, another Brian. He says, five Dragon Ball Supreme Rivalry. You got it. He says, I need a new bag. One, two, three, four, five. And this is for Brian Locke. I think Evolving Skies will hold value. Anything will hold value 20 years later when they stop printing it. 20 years later, people will be like, man, I don't got a lot of that. And you'll be like, I do. Mister, do you like coffee? I like coffee. No, I'm not a big coffee fan, to tell you the truth. I'm more into energy drinks. All right, what do we got? We've got Dark Broly, the Vindicator. Ooh. And over here, we've got Vegeta. It's Vegeta. It's Vegeta. Next up, we have Sudden Escape and Sun Gohan Astonishing Strike. Whoa, I'm getting very astonished. After that, we have... This is the card I want to collect. Bobby D, Bewitching Domination. Oh, you got the non-hollow too. That's a rare. And Vagida. Next up, we have Son Goku, Trusted Ally. All right, there you go, mister. I'll be ordering some unevolving dyes. 
Brian Locke said, new bag, correct? New bag. You're going to take the spot that the other guy was just in because his bag's too big now. DBS card game slaps. Cards are always in good condition too. Now, Mr. Jacob, that at first sounds like a good thing, but it turns out for collecting, it's much better when the cards struggle to grade 10. Ironically, because this leads to rarity. Brian Locke, going in the B-Box. Yeah, we'll put you in this B-Box. What's your favorite number? Um, I was going to say 69 or 420 or something like that. How about the number zero? Zero is really strange. We give it all kinds of strange properties. Next up, we've got Dan Newman. He says, three more Don Ross. Big bag still on the table. You got it, Mr. Dan. The number zero is a very strange number. It's not like... It's not like negative. It's just nothing. It's almost like the absence of a thing, which is strange because you can have negative numbers and those are like when you remove something or... or drop beneath the number the number line or to the left or however you want to think about it. But the zero is just nothing, you know what I mean? Hard to describe, isn't it? All right, Mr. Dan. And uh, it, it becomes a really interesting number to talk about when you're talking in terms of infinity. A lot of people like to think of infinite numbers as a number that gets larger and larger and larger. But zero is interesting because sometimes you can think about infinity going the other way. How about a number that gets infinitely small? A number that gets... And that's something uh, that you don't talk about as much when you think of a concept like infinite. Fred Van Vliet, Eric Pascal, Aaron Gordon, Joe Morant, Laundry, Landry? Cody Zeller. All right, Cody Zeller. So a number can get infinitely small and never reach zero. That would mean between the number zero and the number one is an infinite number of numbers approaching zero, but there's always matter there. There's always something there, like 0 0.0000000 to the infinite one. See what I'm saying? Very, very interesting concept. But the, the number zero assumes there's truly nothing there. How fascinating. Casius, the John Morant. All right, so let's see. You saying John Morant's valuable? We'll go ahead and sleeve it up. As close to zero as possible without reaching. Oh, that feels like a fat one. Let's see. We got Ennis, OG Anungbi, Chris Nerlens, and who's this? Alex. Oh. How many more until we open the NFL Prism? The NFL Prism still has a bit of a way to go. There's seven packs, I'm afraid. Maybe at six packs, we'll open half the box. But I'm afraid if we do that, it'll be much harder to sell the other half of the box. Here's Obi Topin. And uh, the reason that's really important is because when you're talking about particles, we try to get particles uh, as small as possible for something like the, the Hadron Collider so that we can try to zip those particles around in the Hadron Collider almost fast enough that they reach the speed of light, but they can't reach the speed of light. They can't reach the... Nothing can. Nothing that has matter can reach the speed of light. So whatever it is we send in there, we try to make it infinitely small, but not zero because that's not... It wouldn't be matter anymore. Luca... It's Luca. Here's Marcus, Carmelo, Cantavius, Derek Rose. Ooh. And of course, those particles can't reach the speed of light because of problems like drag and friction, and it's just not possible. Zeke. Sadiq. Oh, man. But they try to recreate as, as close to as possible. They try to create uh, the speed of light with their little particles in the Hadron Collider. And everyone's like, oh, no, they're going to burn the whole world down. There's some people, like Christian people, who are like, oh, my God, they're trying to open a portal to hell with the Hadron Collider. But actually, the work that they do with the Hadron Collider is so important. 
Mr. Dan Newman, let's go find your bag. He says, I still have a bag on the table. Well, not anymore, because your bag's so fat. How fat is it? It's so fat that I have to put it in one of the overflows. Sweet. All right. Uh, infinite numbers are an important concept in computer science all the time, actually, as well. See, the problem is, when you're doing math, you end up with situations where a number can be so fractionally small that it's infinitely small, and computers don't know how to count that. Computers, they have, like, programs that help them deal with a situation where there's, like, a leftover number even if it's the smallest percentile of a number, it almost seems infinitely small, but it could actually cause a hardware problem if that number is never accounted for. And so you write software to try to compensate for that. Gene Hyatt says one box of Silver Lance. You got it, Gene. How many spots for Cosmic? Uh, there appear to be 12 spots left. If we don't sell all the spots, we'll just open the ones that are available. I like my bags to be like 3.6 if the guy's feeling generous. What? <laughs> okay, good luck, Mr. Gene. Thank you for ordering a whole box. This is always very entertaining. I uh, sure does, Mr. Brian. I'm in the overflow. It's been a while. What's up, Gene? He says, I'm in the overflow. All right. Did anyone pull the Charizard from Tops? They did. Lucky Mr. Eddie Petty, who went one pack deep, pulled the Charizard. He did exceptionally well. Sleep. They're trying to mess with interdimensional porters with the Hadron. That's right. They want to open up a portal to hell. And that's how Doom started. Sneep. Anthony Roberts says, what did you get? What? <laughs> Sneep. What did I get in the tops? Uh, I don't remember, actually. I think I got... I think I got a pretty bad pack myself. I think I got a pack with, like, a TV hollow... And it wasn't an interesting TV hollow. I'm trying to remember. Does anyone else remember what I pulled? If I don't remember it, it was a bad pull. Okay, Gene Hyatt. Welcome back, man. Glad you popped back in, and I hope you get something sexy out of here. Good luck. Okay, cold. So you say you're in the overflow, huh? Here's a lie part. I got a sticker pack. Did I really? I don't remember. No, I didn't. I didn't get a sticker pack. Did I? No. No, I don't remember now. It's Frostlass. Cold. Oh, you got my little brony. It's Brony Rex. I ordered 15 minutes ago. It's been a while. Woo. Here's Lycanroc. Tauros. I got the sticker surfing Pikachu. Mister, you better give me that sticker surfing Pikachu is for me, mister. I'm trying to take it away. Cold. <laughs> I'm just joking. Galarian Rapidash. This really is a pony set, isn't it? They're like, you know what people want? They want ponies. Cold. Here's... It's Brody Rex! My little brony. Cold. Here's Slowking. Cinderace. Cold. It's because these orders are huge. People are opening like whole boxes of stuff. Here's is Tornadus. He's got a little tentacle. Mmm. Tentacles. Cold. Chop that up. Oh! Oh! That's like one of the best pulls. All right. What's her name again? I'm trying to remember. She's the Chubby Cheeks uh, gym leader. 
I, I can't think of her name off the top of my mind, but I, I, I'm like very close. All I can think is the word snob. Whitney, yes, thank you. Whitney, oh, gym leader Whitney, congratulations. What a hot box. Finally, Santa Conda. Boop. I thought Whitney. Melanie. Whitney is Miltank. Oh, it's Melanie. <laughs> you guys trying to pull a fast one on me? Let's go ahead and throw these packs away. I trust you guys. Whitney is one of the gym leaders. That's Melanie. Oh, thank you. It is Melanie. All right. Thick Lenny. So, Mr. Gene, let's go find your bag. Congratulations. GJM, GMAC, Airless, Gene Hyatt. Look at that. You are in there. How cool. Sweet. Now we have... Let me tell Connor how close he is to his turn. It's Jeff Leon and then Cheese. And after those two guys are done, it's your turn. Okay, Connor? So Jeff Leon says, two vivid, one cosmic. I need... Does that add up? I don't think that adds up. Let me see real fast. Do we change the price of cosmic? Cosmic is 22. And Vivid is nine. Gotcha. Okay, so we made Vivid a little cheaper. I don't know if that's right. Oh, no, he, he's right, but I mean, like, I don't know if Vivid should stay nine. Anyways, so Mr. Jeff Leon, let's get those two Vivids. I'm surprised Vivid's so cheap. I don't trust it. And one Cosmic. So here's the Cosmic list. Name her Felicia. That way, when you put her name in the bag, you can say, bye, Felicia. So 11, Jeff Leon... Sweet. Let's see what you pull, Mr. Jeff. Vivid did go down in price. Oh, I took all those markers away, didn't I? Like up and down, up and down. Pack number one. Whooper Dustnor and Whismer. Sweet. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Jeff, let's go find your bag, Mr. Jeff. Nothing too crazy in there. Jesse, Jacob, James, Jacob, Jennifer. He didn't say I need a new bag. Oh, he says I need a new bag. <laughs> need a new bag. Sorry about that. You did say that, didn't you? Sorry, no hits in those two packs. And now Mr. Cheese, who says, one live custom blooster. Good luck, Cheese. Whoop. Sorry, Cheese, that's not the one. Mr. Cheese. Cheese, I was rooting tooting for you. Let's see, Connor, Anthony, Cheese. Cheese, you got a little bag over here. He needs a pity smoochum. Pity smoochum. All right, now it is Connor's turn. He wants 12 matchless and four sun and moon base. One, two, three, four. Could you sell a cool empty booster box like Rocket or Neo? Suppose I could. I've got like a whole collection of them and I technically don't need them. They're kind of a nice thing to display because, uh, well, basically if they were stolen, it wouldn't matter too much. I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't display actual full boxes. I would put those into a safe or I'd, I'd send them off to PWCC or something like that. So that is a good question. The empty boxes are safer for display. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, good luck, Mr. Connor Gillespie. He made an order in Ethereum. How cool, it's the future. Have you ever sent cards for sale to PWCC? Uh, not PWCC. 
um, but a different place, and I won't say where. Um, I find that PWCC is pretty expensive. I did open an account with them, but after a lot of research, I was like, that's pretty pricey. And I found another way to secure my cards that I think is pretty good. And so I, I do like to send some of my certain cards get sent off and uh, certain booster boxes get sent off. Stuff that I consider too high risk to ever have sticking around with me. Although when I moved, I had all my cards with me when I moved. All right, and sneep. And that was a scary drive. What's PWCC? It's a company that can take your Pokemon cards and put them into a vault for a fee. And I think they're a little overpriced. I think they're a little overpriced. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Connor Gillespie. Gotta say the right name here. I almost called you cheese. They also auction off the cards. That's right. Of course, when they auction your cards off for you, you immediately lose money because they happen to list it with like 20 other cards. Sometimes uh, the same exact card. <laughs> Listed within seconds of each other. We got Zapdos. Ooh, Zapdos. Mister, you missed Mike's Two Cosmic. Mike's Two Cosmic. Miracle Mike Two Cosmic. Hey, Mister, you missed the Two Cosmic in my second order. Could you give me more information? What What's your PayPal name? I need to know what your PayPal name is, not your YouTube name. All right, here's Thunderous. We'll, we'll get that corrected, okay? Let's get it corrected. I gotta I gotta know what your PayPal name is though, real fast. So I can go verify. We've got, oh, this beautiful bad boy, Dracovish, and Cold. <laughs> Mr. Cosmic's in your second order. Is he on a delay? Hello? All right, no special pull out of those. Can I buy those last two? Connor, I'm afraid you could not because <laughs> you would be jumping the line. Also, you didn't buy a whole box of these. So maybe if you had ordered 28 packs, I'd consider it. However, um, you know, that would encourage people to only buy, let's say, 25 packs and then to ask for the live, uh, the last five if they don't pull a hit. See, see why that would be a problem? So I'm afraid it, it is a miss. He reminds me of Drampa. Michael Cusick. Ah, Michael Cusick. Thank you. Mr. Michael, give me a second. Michael Cusick, two spots in the Cosmic. Let me just check. Mike Cusick, you are right. I did not get your spots. I'm so sorry. And you are in now, though. Good catch. All right, there's the list just for anyone else who needs to see it. Sorry about that, Mike. Okay, four Sun and Moon base set. Let's get a hot one. Here's, oh, that is a hot one. Umbreon GX. Beautiful. Pack number two. Polyrath Hollow, pack number three. Oh, that was a nice round of Sun and Moon base. I think you do all right anyways. Rotom Dex and a low and muck. Double hits in your Sun and Moon base packs, and you only ordered four of those. Get these hollows. And we'll get your lovely cards here. How are you doing from your vid earlier? My vid earlier? What vid earlier? You mean the... Are you talking about the uh, Wave Runner? <laughs> it was so cold. I was talking about how it's like 50 degrees out here in Missouri for some reason. And I got soaked from head to toe in water while the wind's whipping around me. And I'm driving like 30 miles an hour for like 15 minutes in the water. It was, it was like the craziest experience ever. I didn't know what to expect, but it was really wild. All right, let's go ahead and refresh. Woo, time to go deep. Kitty's just over here sleeping still. Kitty. All right. Wow, we've had a busy night already. Kitty, we're not going until the last order. We're going to keep going all night if we have to. Six-hour stream, guys. You guys thought that this would be a slow stream. This is just the beginning. Gregory Moore, and he says, give me Cosmic. 
too good of a set to pass up on. You got it, Mr. GJM. Mr. GJM. Dennis Doherty says, I will have one pack of Silver Lance and immediate live shipping. You got it, Dennis Doherty. He says, I'm in. Okay, we got our one pack here. And here's your bag, Mr. Dennis. Let's go ahead and sneak this up. One pack of Silver Lance. Boop. And that's going to be a cold pack. We'll slip that in here. Dennis, you didn't have any other pulls, did you? I don't think he did. I'm going to go ahead and get his label made. Mr. Dennis. All right, I've got your address that begins with 7-8. And I got your email. And this will be a very light pack. There we go. Print. I can't believe I almost have to buy more postage already again. All right, Mr. Dennis needs immediate live shipping. You got it. Let's see. What do you think about this, Kitty? So I'm taking extra care with this shipping because you have this lovely booster pack. This box is too small. Let's get you a better box. All right, we got a bigger, better box for you. You know what they say, Kitty? Kitty, they say bigger is better. Dennis, you are live ship. Sweet. Oof. Let's see who's next. Jack Gray. He says one jet black and one silver lance. You got it, Jack. Jack's here for one thing and one thing only. Super Snipes. That purchase of 15 Pokemon card packs got me addicted to this all over again. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon cards are really fun. All right, let's see what we got. Sandaconda. Ooh, Sandaconda. And pack number two is cold. You pick up a Sandaconda VMAX. Mr. Jack. Sweet. Next up, we got Ricardo Marquez. What's up, Ricardo? He says, two cosmic, live shipping. I really don't remember how many bags I have. I do also have a bulk box, so send that as well. Absolutely. So we're going to need live shipping on a bulk box. And we stopped doing bulk boxes, but you do have a nice large bulk box full of cards. I'm going to get that shipped for you. Okay, there we go. Oops. 
<laughs> oh my god. People are already getting so quiet. You guys tired? All right, guys. This will be the ASMR stream. No talking anymore, okay? I won't do any talking. I'll just be perfectly silent. Or no, I'll whisper the whole time. So, two Cosmics. They were a buck for a dollar or four on Amazon. All right, so uh, 15 and 16 will be our Marquez. There we go. Next up, we open for Mr. Oscar Vaughn. He says two Silver Lance. All right, two Silver. One Vivid. One Vivid. One Jet Black. All right, sweet. So in order to get my card ship, I need to score it. Yes and no. If you want to ship your cards for free, you need to log into Discord, go to the Please Ship channel, and write me a message. You just say, hey, ship my stuff. Here's what I have. If you want to avoid Discord for some reason because you don't like it, uh, you could always order live shipping, but then you'd be stuck ordering live shipping every time. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, technically, you could just uh, fill a baggie up, and then when you're finally ready to ship, you could order one round of live shipping. So that's a way to avoid Discord if you don't want to have a Discord account. Uh, but I don't recommend it, though, because we do so much other communication through Discord. Oh, man, only hollows in those cards that time. I'm sorry, Mr. Oscar. That's a tough round. Mr. Oscar. Where am I going to find you? I'm going to find you over here, aren't I? Oasis Grooming, Michael, Nurses, Osmar, Mark, Master, can I pay $2 to pre-grade my surfing Pikachu? To pre-grade the surfing Pikachu? I suppose you could, mister. Uh, but tell you what, don't do that. Um, let me just take a look at it for you. Special, special privileges for doing all the editing or the uh, thumbnails. Now, we're still looking for Oscar, though. He doesn't need a new bag. He says, I have a bag. I send Mr. My Knee Picks. All right. You get everything you want now. You want Eevee Heroes? Here's Owen, Michael, Oscar LaCal, Mason, Nicobla, and Business, Morgan, Matthew, Mark. Man, we should create an O box or something. Like an O-N box. I think that would work. Do we have any more... Did I go through all of them? Maybe I didn't go through this one. Hold on. Here's Mike Hoover, Mike Spanos, Mar Mario Lopez, Marcos, Oscar Vaughn. Is this right? Here it is. I found you. I found you. Ha ha. We're going to put you in the other box, actually. I think I'll start doing that automatically. Start migrating all the O's and N's to the other box. So Miguel wants to take a look at his Pikachu card. So this is a Pikachu sticker card. I wouldn't even know how they would center this because it doesn't appear to have any kind of, of like centering border. Uh, the edges look fine, I guess. I'll be honest, I don't know how they're going to grade it. Oh, no, take a look at this. There is actually a line here. Hold on. Oh, man. <laughs> what is that all about? Oh, it's here too on this side. Well... I would say probably not a 10, Mr. Miguel. Maybe they will give it an 8. It looks nice. Hmm. Sticker card, huh? Mr. Miguel. Let's move on to Mr. James Gower. He says, Mr., I want two live custom boosters and give out Silver Lance to the next 10 people, one each. Wow. Damn. So 10 packs of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10 packs of Silver Lance. And that's a donation from Mr. James Gower to you guys. The next 10 people get a free pack. That's very cool. That's like what Mr. Uh, James O'Brien was doing for a while. You guys are too generous. All right, and then he also wants two live customs. Let's see what happens. Boop. Chandelure and boop, Chiarita. Oh, no! <laughs> James, that's very nice of you, James. Let's go ahead and pop these into your bag. I knew exactly where your bag was, too. Isn't that funny? 
James is over here just enjoying some pokey fun. All right, so now we got a nice little James Gower donation. Next up, we got Ramiro Andrade. He says, for Don Russ. Now, here's a good question. If they don't order Pokemon cards, if they order a different hobby, should we still give them a Pokemon? One, two, three, four. I think we should. I know Ramiro has ordered Pokies for Pokemon cards before. All right, here it is. Good luck to Ramiro. Mr. is not real. This is all a dream. It feels like that, I bet. When you're watching this, if you watch this stream every night, maybe it starts to feel like a dream at some point. <laughs> all of life can feel like a dream if your head's hazy enough. Okay, good luck, Mr. Ramiro. We've got Blake, Ricky, Ben. I don't know how to say that guy's name. Miles, Joel Ambid, Caleb, and Precious. It's Precious. I just bought a Topps Gengar, says Goblin. Nice. Topps Gengar. Hey, that should be my Topps Gengar. These guys are really good at handling balls. Next up, we've got Terrence, Chris Dops, Hassan, Kobe, Kobe White, Serge. Over here, we've got Devont. Oh, that's the one I wanted. He did say the next 10 who order, not only order Pokemon. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement. We were we were going to get one for Mr. Ramiro, even though he ordered uh, base, uh, basketball. Should I get baseball cards? Anyone here interested in uh, baseball cards? Here's Kevin, Sakao, Bogdan, Buddy, Gordon, Harry Giles, Harry Balls, Nick Richards, and Trey Jones. Mister, you're a slave to the kitty bowl. To the kitty bowl? What? Okay, put that there. Drew says yes. Boo, baseball. <laughs> if you got baseball cards, Mister, I would be here every night. Anime softball. Football cards. We do have football Don Russ on the way. Also, we have football prism, which is surprisingly expensive. But yes, we have football prism. Soccer would be the next popular sport. What? Not according to the little poll we did in the uh, live uh, in the Discord server, though. NHL or sumo. All right, we're getting sumo packs, guys. My favorite packs are sumo packs. Beach Volleyball? <laughs> You're ahead of your time, Mike Said. Jamal, John, LeBron James. LeBron James? Be honest, is the LeBron James card valuable? Or is he, like, overprinted? Here's Bradley, Keldon. Who's this? Kareem. It's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Isn't he retired? He's retired, right? All-time league leaders. Yeah, he's retired. So Daniel Oturu. And Jaden McDaniels. Woo. It's Kareem. He's one of my favorites. All right, Ramiro with an R, right? Let's go find your bag. He is maybe up top. Lana Rhodes rookie card. Now that is a card I would need to get a hold of. Raul, Ryan, Ray, Reteb. Ramiro might not be up here. Ryan Hutch. Ryan, Ryan. Ramiro. Poke Kobe. He gets a free pack. Who gets a free pack? I want a free pack. Oh, right. The, the uh, Silver Lines. I'm so distracted because we pulled the, uh, the... What's his name again? Kamir? <laughs> Kareem. Remember, I don't watch any basketball. I haven't watched it ever at any point in my life. The fact that I even recognize that guy's name is amazing to me. All right. Ah, oh, a cold one. I'm sorry. That's a cold one. Now, Ramiro. We need to find out where his baggie is. We got Ralph. Here we go. Ramiro Andrade. So, for the basketball fans, which which set of cards are you liking better? Are you liking the Hoops cards better, or are you liking the Don Russ cards better? But, mister, that means the next one is a guaranteed hit. That's, that's correct. 
Ever Treminio says another five Supreme Rival. You got it. One, two, three, four, five. This is for Ever Treminio. Hoops are better, says J1 More Rep. Sneep. One, two, three, four, and five. Sneep. The giveaway tonight is awesome. Well, keep in mind, Alex, it's not just for tonight. It's for tomorrow night, too, okay? So it's for two days. But you guys can make sure that you get yourself into the uh, giveaway starting tonight, right? So we're going to run it for two streams. And uh, that way we get give plenty of people a chance to jump into it. I can't order any more packs after my next order. It's got to wait till the mid of the month. Mister, you better keep some money around so you can feed yourself. Has anyone pulled the secret rare from Supreme Rivalry? Uh-huh. It's been pulled six times. So here we go. We've got Android 20 and Cool Effortless Strike. SPR, huh? Now, that's not secret rare. That's, uh, what do they call that? Special rare? And there's 10 special rares. Very cool. Here's King Cold. <laughs> He's so cold. He's a supreme ruler. Uh, Bardock, Pride of Low Class Warrior. Wow, this guy's low class. We also have K Kikono and Galactic Buster. Oh! Mr. 1600 Doge for the Charizard Hyper. Um, Maybe. How would you get it over to me? Here's Son Goku at full power. You underestimate my power. Don't do it, Anakin. I have the power of God and anime on my side. All right, cool. Now you also get one of these Silver Lance booster packs from our good friend, James Gower. See, Bardock is Goku's papa. Papa, uh, what's the term? Poppy, Poppy Lucci or something like that? Poppy Lucha? Sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Next up, we've got Ever Treminio, who needs to be put into his bag. And then we can open the next guy, actually. <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself there. Poppy Chulo. There we go. That's what I would. Poppy Chulo. But, mister, there's only two secret rares. All right, next up, we've got Nicholas Lenhart, who says six NBA Don Russ. And how many left on NBA Prism? So it's not NBA Prism, it's NFL Prism. There's seven spots left. Now, Mr. Nicholas wants six of the Don Russ. All right, you got it. Oh, that's only four. I cannot believe how popular all of these sports cards are. We are selling so many of them. Oops. It's so weird for me because I, I never was into sports. I was only ever into Pokemon. And so to see something else actually go for some kind of money, it's kind of like, what? No, uh -uh. People like the balls. That's what I think. Okay. Nicholas Lenhart. Good luck on your pulls. Did he say he needed a new bag? Nicholas Lenhart, do you need a new bag? Let me know, Mr. Nicholas Lenhart. Sneep. One, two. Sport cars will get you shot. Three, four. These guys just like pictures of dudes. I knew it! They like dribbling them balls. Mom, they're making fun of my favorite hobby. Make them stop. We've got Langston, Markel, Clint, Kendrick, Kyle Kuzma, Dennis Smith Jr. Mister, you never watched basketball? That's why you're not into it. It's absolutely true. I never watched any of the sports, and that's why I'm not into it. There we go. You like pony cards. Here's Tyler Bay and Ty Tyrell Terry. Woo! Mister, I would much rather collect Digimon. Digimon! Where's those Digimons? We got CJ, John Wall, Nicola, Jimmy Butler, oh, 
Zion Williamson, and Alfred Payton. Hey, I know that name. Modern Digimon is fire. What? You also pull Peyton Pritchard and Tyrese Maxey. I'm not much into sports, but still enjoy these openings. They're very interesting. Was with the Cosmic only today. How's it going, Russ? Today, we're going to have some Cosmic, and tomorrow, Cosmic will no longer be available again. Harrison, Shabazz. Great expectations, Tyrese Halliburton. Mr. My CGC cards are scheduled for grading. Oh, very cool. That means you've waited like half a year. <laughs> Isn't that the wait time now? It's like some crazy amount of time. Mr. The General Mills and McDonald's are going away. Yes, I'll no longer offer them soon. They will become a rotating item. We've got Lou, Dwayne Bacon, Thon Maker, Will Barton, Victor Oladipo. Here's Aaron Nesmith. Ooh. There we go. And Skyler and Sabin. Wait, those guys aren't LaMelo or Anthony Edwards. Where's Skyler and Anthony Edwards? Glad I have a Pikachu from McDonald's. MetaZoo is way overpriced. They started the company on $18,000. Here's Langston, Markel, Toreen, Tobias, Jonathan. Who's this? Luca Donkick. You got a Luca Donkick. And we've got Daniel Oturu and Jaden McDaniels. Don't get rid of the General Mills and McDonald's. Uh, they'll be offered, but they'll be offered on rotation. All right, last pack. What do we got? We've got CJ, John Wall, Nicola, Jordan, Luke, who's this? This is James Harden. Ooh, James Harden. Franchise features. Also, Caleb Martin and Precious again. Get out of here, Precious. You're supposed to be LaMelo. Boop. All right. Luca Donkey Kick. What? Keep going around donkey kicking people. Luca and Halliburton, the best pulls. It's LaMelo. <laughs> wow, that's quite a few cards we open. Caleb, Precious, James, Daniel, Jaden, Luca Donkick, Skylar Sabin, Aaron, Isaac, James, Tyrese Halliburton, Peyton, Tyrese, Alfred, Tyler Bay, Tyler Terry, and Dennis. Someone tried to sell a non-grady McDonald's Pikachu for $70,000. Pay my student loan, please. Now, I might have missed it. Did Nicholas explain whether or not... Did Nicholas explain if he, have, if he had a bag? He's right here. He does have a bag. All right. I knew your name sounded too familiar. I've been reading it this whole time. Give Gimme a Secret Rare Silver. Oh, right. Silver Lance. Silver Lance. So, Mr. Nicholas, you're getting a rare gift from Mr. James Gower, and that is a free pack of Silver Lance. You're pokey rich, Mr. Nicholas. You pull is Tornados. He got a little tentacle arm. We'll put it right in front of Caleb. He likes tentacles. All right. And you go right back up top because that is a good spot for your bag. Who's next? Anthony Roberts. He says, oh, oh, mister, give me another box of Rage. Please, I have a bag somewhere. You got it, Anthony Roberts. Rage, huh? So Phantom Rage, which is a box of Yu-Gi-Oh! This is for Anthony Roberts. Mike Size says, eyes are getting heavy, mom spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. Time for you to go to bed. Oops, smacking the pole. All right, definitely a Zeus in here. And definitely a, definitely going to be a Starlight Zeus. Put this back over here. 
Here it goes. Oh, man. Easy Yugi's for all. What's that music playing? Who sleeps on a Friday night? Hey, some people have to work on the weekend. Look at me, for example. I mean, I'm going to start snipping these from the bottom. They're all pushed up at the top. Oh, it's the other way around now. Weird. All right. People who worked all day. Sneep. You know how it is. Working all day and then paying the government. The mob boss, right? <laughs> My wife and I were watching a free docu-series on YouTube called Hardest... Most Dangerous Prisons. I thought it was going to be Hardest Prisons. They live a hard life. Most Dangerous Prisons. We're watching a docu-series by that free documentary channel, and it is so crazy how some prisons are ran. There's one prison where they don't have any guards inside of the prison. It's completely ran by the prisoners. And what happens when it's completely wrong set what? What are you talking about? It's not the wrong set. He said rage. Man, I'd be bummed if I if he got a Zeus. Nope. It's not the wrong set. Who said that it's the wrong set? Oh, maybe he's responding to somebody else. Work government jobs. You don't got to work weekends. They don't let you. Here's the Tri-Brigade Ferrajit, Fer the Baron Blossom. Woo! He says, no, I'm talking to someone else. Yeah, I got confused. Sorry about that, Brian. <laughs> so anyways, we were watching this docuseries on YouTube, and it was about the hardest prisons. And I was talking about how one of the... Oh! Arc Rebellion XYZ Dragon. Ooh, looking pretty fancy. I was talking about how one of the prisons has no guards on the inside. It's completely ran is completely ran by the prisoners themselves. And this is so crazy because you're like, well, how does that work out? Is it just a free-for-all? Well, no, because once you get inside the prison, it turns out there's this sort of group that rules over the prison and they themselves are prisoners. However, they become a government. They become a government. So even when you take all the criminals and toss them together, what happens? A government forms. And the government kind of comes out of the chaos as a sort of stabilizing force that makes everyone have to follow the same rules so that you don't murder and rob and kill each other. So I thought that was so ironic that inside the prison where these criminals who have, they've done murders, they've done theft, they've done rape, even in the prison when they've, they're given freedom, do whatever they want in jail, they still put together a government and establish rules. They say no killing, no stealing, no raping, right? So like one of the things is if you're a rapist, they'll drown you. They don't, they don't give you like a fancy trial. They don't let you defend yourself. If they think you're a rapist, which maybe somebody lied about you, I don't know. But if they think you're a rapist, you're going to get drowned in their little pool. Oh, there you go, Mr. Divine Arsenal of Zeus. That is a great box. Congratulations. That was for Anthony Roberts. So I found that very interesting that they don't like the rules in the outside world enough that they'll break them. But once they're thrown into prison and the government will no longer protect them with guards, there's no more government control, what do they do? They immediately establish their own government control because they don't want to get stabbed. They don't want to get murdered. They don't want to be stolen from. So I thought that was the most ironic thing ever. And the other thing I noticed too, there was another thing I noticed, uh, the ruling group, the sort of aristocracy of the jail, if you will, they, they require that you pay them money. So you're in the jail and there's a whole economy in the jail. You have, to, you have to do some kind of useful job like cook or clean. Remember, there's no guards. That means the guards don't feed anyone. The guards don't do the laundry. The, the guards, they're just on the outside of the jail. They're not on the inside. So on the inside, this sort of economy is established with money and you get paid. and You have to pay the ruling group a certain amount of money 
in order to be allowed to do anything. And it made me realize, oh my God, that's all a government is, isn't it? <laughs> that's a tax. And it's funny because these guys are in the prison, that these rulers in the prison, they're prisoners themselves, they've established a government. If you don't pay the money, they'll kill you. And I think to myself, how is that? That's just not that much different from the real world government. If you don't pay your United States taxes, they will eventually throw you into prison. And then you can, you know, see what I'm saying? So I thought that was actually very interesting because these guys are like, they're like mob bosses, right? That's what the mafia does. The mafia goes around and they say, hey, you're going to pay us some money and we're going to offer you protection. That's what they say. You need some protection. And the funny thing is, a little bit, they're right. That protection, you could even think of that on the outside world. You pay the government taxes and the government says, here's some protection. Here's some police officers, right? And that's what they have inside of that prison. They, they've established a powerful structure of guys that'll beat you to death. And they say, we'll give you protection, but you're going to give us money. And uh, yeah, it's just the parallels are all there. And it made me feel like the U.S. government is more like a mafia. Uh, but maybe that's just the way it works, you know. And maybe that's just the way it works. And the funny thing is, uh, some of the prisoners that get sent to the prison, if they're known for murdering a lot of people, they actually are higher rank in the prison. And you know why? is because they're more useful to the ruling class in the prison, right? They're more useful to the ruling class because they can send that guy off to kill you. He does the dirty work. So if you're a murderer, they like you. Uh, but if you're like a, let's say a child rapist, which by the way, I know that uh, child rapist, they didn't kill anyone. They had sex with the kid, which is really terrible and, and vile and all the bad things. But a murderer literally kills someone right? So somebody dies. It's technically worse, even though both are both crimes are terrible. Being murdered is still worse than being raped. But the child rapists are put to death, whereas the murderers are exalted. It's sort of an interesting thing because it made me realize you get power from murder. Being able to, being able to kill someone actually gives the ruling class power. And uh, what did I think of? A military. A military really is just guys who you pay to kill other people. So interesting. I, it, it just, the, the parallels that occurred between this little microcosm of a, of, a, of a, I suppose a city or country, this little mini country within a prison, uh, jail, or whatever, that, that sort of evolved. It looks just like the outside world. Very, very interesting. So Anthony Roberts, he says, I have a bag somewhere. Mr. Anthony Roberts says he has a bag somewhere. Let's go find it, Mr. Anthony. The same thing we have on the outside just sort of evolved inside of their little jail cell. Left alone, they, they developed the same government we have now. Anthony Williams, Adrian, Amanda. And I think they're a bit more brutal. And I think their citizens are a bit more brutal as well. So that's one of the main differences. Anthony Roberts says it's a big one. Oh, okay. So you're saying you've got a big bag with me somewhere, huh? Interesting. And uh, how long ago was your last order? Was it a long, long time ago? I'm trying to think of where I've seen an Anthony Roberts last. Can we see the Zeus? Ooh, Zeus. Just make the Zeus twinkle, mister. I want to see it twink. How about robbing? Well, I don't think that you would be thrown into that prison if you were simply a robber. It was like a silver lance, my dude. Do we not get a silver lance? Here you go. This is a gift of Silver Lance to our good friend, Mr. Anthony Roberts. Thank you, James. James Gower gifts you a cold one. Oh, man, all these cold ones. Don't worry, there'll be a hot one. Now, Anthony Roberts, I need to find your bag. I'm going to start looking. The problem is, I don't remember the last time I saw an Anthony Roberts. There's Alan Tan. Cole Kokoschke. Joey Joseph, so, which, by the way, we need to ship Joey Joseph. Joey. No, Luke Charlton's over there. I don't know where your bag is, mister. R. Marquez. R. Marquez has a huge bag. Louis Laura, Dave Jantz. Now, you're not going to be here. There's James Garrett, Earth Savior, and uh, Brian Ochoa. I already know that's Brian Ochoa. So you're not there. 
You're saying you got a large bag somewhere, huh? I'm going to check up top real fast and see if we find it. Mister, I got a silver lance already. What? Ah, here we are. Your bag's not that large. You tricked me, mister. <laughs> it is a bit of... It's, it's like borderline. Yeah, it's pretty large. All right, Anthony the Zeus. Now it's a very large bag, but actually it's still going to go up top. You know why? Because we have room for you up top. We just got an order with ETH. Man, somebody's making an ETH transaction. Who ordered uh, with Ethereum, and how much was it? You got to tell me the amount. All right, there we go. So, Brian Ochoa, he says, can I get some live shipping? You sure can, Brian. All right, Brian. It was me, $2. Connor, salty for the matchless. Mike, you're past your bedtime. Mike, you better go to sleep, Mike. All right, here's Brian Ochoa. And uh, I'll write live down here. You got a huge bag, mister. This definitely should be done after the stream. All right. Who was it that sent the Ethereum? And can you tell me how much you sent? Tell me the amount. He says he also has a slab. Let me write that down too. There we go. Next up, we have Connor Gillespie, who says two matchless and one Sun and Moon base. You got it. Now, Mr. Connor, you need to snipe. Let's see if we can get you a snipe. I'd show you my huge bag, but you already sent it anyway. All right, and you also get a Silver Lance from Mr. James Gower. Which one is better, Squirtle or Charmander? Uh, obviously, Charmander. He turns into Cherizard, and Cherizard has a big, scary flames. Duh. Blastoise is just a turtle, and also Blastoise, he's a Trumpy. You know how I know Blastoise is a Trumpy? Because look, he's all about guns. No, no, no. All right, so here goes. Decidueye. Here's the Silver Lance from James. Oh, that's, a, that's the secret rare. Oh, Connor, no bad feelings now, Ha! Huh? You did extremely well. That's a free pack. You didn't even order that one. Luck shined on you anyways tonight. Thank you, Mr. James Gower, for the donation. And we got Rune Rigis. In fact, you would not have pulled that if I had not made the mistake of opening two packs. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my Lord. All right. Howdy, mister. How well... Actually, that's not true. You still would have gotten this. I, I'm incorrect about that. You still would have gotten this. You know why? Because technically, Brian Ochoa's pack would have been the second pack, the second cold pack. Brian Ochoa, he did put in an order. It was just live shipping, but uh, I passed over opening a pack for him because we had opened up that second pack and it was empty. So I was like, he doesn't need, you know what I'm saying? So this really was yours, Mr. Connor. Also, we'll note you did not pull a secret rare out of the match list. So you have a nice night, Mr. Connor. How about that? And that really was your pull. All right, so here we go. Yeah, I sort of misspoke there. Connor. All right. I'm back. The bear left. James has the cheese piecer. Kind of think about me on your next order. Still really did that gold colossal. Still really did that gold colossal. If there was a game called Pokemon Gun, would you have it? Pokemon Gun? Pokemon Machine Gun and Pokemon Goss Cannon. <laughs> Pokemon Shotgun and Pokemon Rifle. I don't know. Doesn't really have a zing to it. You know what I mean? I really dig that gold colossal. He's really nice, isn't it? You want to see him up close? He goes for about $150. And uh, he's a beautiful golden ultra rare from Darkness Ablaze. I think he's actually designed pretty good. He, he reminds me of Golem from the base set. Uh, but he's got a great setup. Like he's a rock type and a fire type at the same time. That's cool. Very creative. How you been, mister? I haven't been on the stream in a couple days. Welcome back, Mr. Big Back. All right, so after our friend Connor, by the way, who was it that sent the Ethereum? I still didn't get that sorted out. 
I got one of those golf colossals. Yay. Oh, gold colossals. I'm just going to stare at the screen until that guy answers. The secret rare doesn't belong to me because I said he opened two false packs. What? But I will take it. What do you think the 25th anniversary set is going to be? I think it's going to be big peepee chews. Who sent the Ethereum? Stroke, smoke, stroke, smoke. All right, so nobody's answering. I've just got some Ethereum. I sent an order, mister. Mr. Static, were you the one who sent the Ethereum? Is that what you meant? Connor says, did I? Question mark? I don't know if you did. It doesn't tell me who it comes from. It just tells me that it arrived. Let me go look at my email. He says, did I send it? All right. So it says at 12.59, I received Ethereum. And then it says at 2.28, I also received Ethereum. So this is a second order of Ethereum. I don't know who sent it, so I can't get them anything. Does it show the same address? Oh, good question. Let me see. From an external Ethereum account. Uh, it does not really say, no. However, whoever sent it should, uh, they should be able to look into their account and tell me exactly how much they sent. Joshua says it was me. Uh, don't, don't lie, guys. We don't want any actual confusion here. Somebody here actually did send money. I know it's fun to joke, though. <laughs> I have the Rainbow Rare Colossal. Fan says, good question. What's up, Fan? <laughs> he says, I was kidding. <laughs> I sent ETF, but I... I sent ETF, but I left a note. It says Stay Tropical. Oh, you mean on, like, PayPal? Is that what you mean? Well, I will be looking for that note. Wait, can you send a note when you send Ethereum? Let me just read it real fast. Uh, let me try signing in. I didn't send it. Check Discord. Where'd you leave the note? Stay tropical. I posted notes to my Ethereum orders. Really? I did not know there was such a thing. All right, hold on. I don't see any notes. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. All right, well, I'm going to continue opening packs. The person who sent the Ethereum should tell me how much it was and what they wanted. So, Connor Gillespie's done. James Gower's next. He says, two spots in the Cosmic and one Japanese team-up. You got it. That's 17 and 18 for Mr. James Gower. There you go, James. Stay Tropical, he says, I sent the amount of $100. Thank you, Mr. St uh, Stay Tropical. And can you tell me what it is? Uh, well, what's your, uh, do you have a bag name? Or are you just Stay Tropical? And what would you like to open? There we go. Two spots in Cosmic, one Japanese team up. Where's my team up? Here we are. 11 NBA Don Russ. All right. He says, I don't have a bag. All right. So stay tropical. Have I ever, have I ever opened for you before? Do you have like a, do you have like a PayPal address? Meaning, can I, can I write your real name down so that when it comes time to ship, I can always verify you? That's always better if we can do that, but I don't know if, if we have before. Mr. James Gower, you pulled this beautiful hollow Blastoise. I really like that card. So there's a Blastoise and a Charizard in this set, and I think they're both very gradable. Crypto system feels less efficient than trading potatoes. Matt Thurgood, there we go. Mr. Matt, since you ordered a whole box, I can 
I can actually open you immediately because it won't affect anyone else uh, else's pull rate. Mr. Matt Thurgood. All right, give me a moment. See if I can reach him. Ah, there we go. Mr. What about my Silver Lance? Here you go. Silver Lance. Silver Lance. I wasn't sure if you'd want one for yourself. <laughs> Ah, it's a cold one. I'm sorry. You have to steal that other one from Mr. Connor Gillespie. Would you like to see a fourth Charizard Evolution to look different than Charizard? What? No, no. I, I, a fourth Evolution for, for a Charizard? What are you even talking about? All right. Good luck, Matt. I don't think it would come around that fast. I think PayPal is easier than Ethereum. Yeah, I have to agree. PayPal is definitely easier. Okay, get comfortable. We're going to go through 10. I'm sorry. We're going to go through 11 Don Russ packs. Blue Eyes White Charizard. <laughs> it's Blue Eyes White Charizard. What's the ETA on the EV packs? No clue. No idea. That is something I wouldn't know. All I know is that they're ordered. Okay, good luck to Matt Thurgood. Matt, that is a fat pack. Weird freaking pack. Cowie Giannis, Mitchell, Damian, and who's this? Jonathan Isaac. All right, you get Jonathan Isaac. For your, your fat pack. There we go. For your jersey card. Ooh. I'll swim across the Pacific and get them. Oh, thanks. Could you do that? What if Charizard had Psychic and Fire? Hey, mister, hope to make the reserve list. For sure, mister. Here's an Anthony Edwards. Congratulations. And Obi Toppin. Is it possible to keep all the cards? Uh, if you... Oh, let me think about it. Yeah, if you want to do live shipping, I can get you all the cards, okay? Oh, man, my back's making me want to kill myself right now. We should wrap up soon. We've got Jordan, Luke, RJ, Stephen Curry, McCall. Here's Tyrese, Maxi. What's going on with that Cosmic Eclipse thing? Uh, we're only opening Cosmic Eclipse tonight. We're not going to be opening it other nights. And it's it's going to be on a reserve list. And we're going to open them all at the same time for fun, okay? Need me to crack your back. Man, I need to not sit for so many hours where I need. I, I sat too long yesterday, and I, I did damage to my back. So here's Joe Harris, Lori, Darius, Bam, Joel. Who is this? We got Wilt... Chamberlain. All right. Wilt Chamberlain for league leaders. Isaiah and Devin are your rookie cards. Let's finish the cosmic and then you can go to bed. Boop. Next up, we've got TJ Warren, Draymond, Toreen, Kevin Love, Lonzo, Holographic LaMarcus. I like these hollow cards. These right here. These look very displayable. Okay, LaMarcus. You also pull Jemias Ramsey and Jordan Nwora. Where is that goddamn LaMelo? <laughs> is that the card you guys are after? Okay, there we go. Next pack. Is this also a fat pack? It feels fat. Tobias, Jonathan, Gary, Derek Rose, Steven Adams. We got Miles Turner. All right. Do you have football? Uh, pretty soon we'll have football Don Russ cards. We have football prism right now, but it's it's really pricey. So if you order a pack of that, you'll be putting on a, put on a reserve list to be open with everyone else. He's the hottest rookie in this year's class, so his cards are selling at a premium. Gotcha. So it would be really good to pull a mellow. Here's Clint, Kendrick, Kyle. Dennis, JJ, Russell Westbrook says complete players. 
We also have Kyra Lewis and Jalen Smith. Ooh. Next up, we have Jimmy Butler, Zion Williamson. Is Zion a good one? I thought I heard someone say that. James Johnson, Grant, Andrew Wiggins. Here's Nicola. Oh, man, that's the card I wanted. It's Nicola LaMelo. There's LaMelo Ball. You guys were saying that's the card you want. LaMelo Ball. You also have Cassius. No, bad card. Get up there. Next up, we pull Marcus, Lamelo, Harrison, Chavez, Terry, Nicola, Nicola, Anthony Edwards. Great expectations. We also have Tyrell Terry and Peyton. Holy, if I open enough of these, I'll have every single one of these players memorized. Sleeve the Zion. Is Zion really that valuable? So I sleeve them if they're over a dollar in value. Here we go, Zion. I just sent postage and live shipping through PayPal. Oh, thanks, man. All right, and what do we have here? We've got Will, Victor, Eric, Devante. He's taking all these home, by the way, guys. Cody, who's this? We've got Jarrett Allen. I love this sort of like 80s card style. It says power in the paint. There's an outside chance that Allen is going to make an impact on the inside. Check that is a given that it will happen. The net center has evolved. What? Evolved into one of the NBA's most productive players. Okay. I have no clue. <laughs> Tyrese and Josh Green. Now the music stopped too. We gotta get that music running again. Two packs remain. That feels like a fat pack. It's so weird. We've got Ben, Ivic, Miles, De'Aaron, Trevor. <gasps> it's Doug McDermott. Oh my lord. That's the very one I was looking for. Also, James Wiseman and Skylar Mail. Mail. I can't speak Maze. <laughs> It's LaMelo. <laughs> Sweet. And last pack you pull. Cody, Sergey, DeJounte, Dwight, and Fernie. And Fernie? Here's DeMar DeRozan. Sweet. Finally, Saban and Tyler Bay. I feel like Tyler Bay gets pulled too much. Tyler. Get out of here, Tyler. <laughs> let's get that music playing the music helps the time go by it's very interesting when the music turns off it feels like the stream slows down almost and the music makes the stream go faster so all this for Matt Thurgood he also needs a pack for Mr. James Gower he pulled Lamello. sweet you did it, mister. It's LaMelo. Now you can tell your mom. Where's the hockey cards? Oh, man, there's a lot of sport cards out there. They are checking locks. I'd buy MetaZoo over sports. MetaZoo, it's going to the moon. All right, all that... All that foil goes into the trash. Definitely won't end up in a landfill. Oh, wait. Yes, it will. <laughs> you also get Tornadas from our good friend, James Gower. All right. And we're ready to move on to the next order. There we go. You are signed up for the live shipping. Sweet. Thank you so much. Next up, we have 
James Gower, Connor Gillespie, James Gower, John Gamia. Can I get one more spot in Cosmic, eight Sword and Shield base set, and live shipping? Wow, everyone's ordering that live shipping. It's kind of interesting because we're going into a weekend, and I don't know if the mailman picks up on Saturday, this Saturday, because it's Memorial Day weekend. So one Cosmic for John Gamia. Here we go. 19 is John Camillo. MetaZoo over sports. Lost sport cards are more valuable than Pokemons. Uh, yeah, but are they better than MetaZoo? Duh. So, eight Sword and Shield base. Let's go grab those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're also going to pick up Silverlands. Is the Kissing Latios in Cosmic? No, that's in Team Up. That is in Team Up. Sneep. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Any third world kid can fashion a soccer ball out of a out of a stray cat. <laughs> what? Sneep. I don't think that's a hundred percent true. <laughs> MetaZoo is nothing but FOMO for investors. The artwork is bad. You just don't understand understand the memes, mister. You're a boomer. Boomer! MetaZoo to the moon! Here's Inteleon. Here's Rare Candy Rillaboom. Oh, man, my back's starting to hurt. There's Sizzlepede. Pokey Kid, Santa Conda. Delmize. Ooh, Delmize. Cut an NFL pack, you wouldn't. Here's Rillaboom. Grookie. And Cold Ones. All right. Thank you so much, James Gower. That was an excellent gift. Very expensive, too. So generous. James Gower, guys. Now, John Gamia would like some live shipping. Is that right? Can I get one more spot in the Cosmic? Eight Sword and Shield base set and live shipping. You got it. But shouldn't we keep your bag on the table until we open that Cosmic? I think so. John Gamia. I think you're on this side. Are you on this side? I think you're on the right side. Are you on the right side of history, John? Here it is. John Gamia. That's what they always say in politics. Right side of history. Right side of history. I want to be on the right side of history. You're going to be on the wrong side of history. <laughs> Sexy Jeski, thanks, man. It was pretty fun, too. I, I actually had to drive it home in the water. That's how you get your jet ski parked. They they drop it off in a... Uh, they drop it off in the water, and, and then they hand it off to you, and you, you got to drive it home. It was uh, really, really crazy. Flesh and Blood is 100% a pump and dump by Rudy from Alpha Investments. Yeah, uh, you know, I feel like what's most important for card sets is is to build real nostalgia that pays off, like, not now, but, like, 20 years later. And I don't really think MetaZoo has done that, and I don't really think, uh, uh, whatever it is, Blood and, what is it called? Flesh and Blood. <laughs> I almost called it Blood and Soil. <laughs> well, anyways, I don't really think they've done that. Next up, we've got Juan Garcia, who says, just here for my live pack snipe. You got it, Mr. Juan Garcia. Woo. Ah, uh, this time it is a metal hollow energy. Oof. Blood and tampons. Justin. Justin Huerta. Julian. Justin Vasquez. Mr. Garcia, did we just ship you? I feel like we just shipped you. Okay, I'm cutting an NBA pack. I've seen one person buy magic. New bag. You got it. New bag. One thing we might start doing in the uh, live custom booster box is as the night approaches and the orders slow down, I might start cutting the... Uh, so like this. See how we have these booster packs? I might start grab half, grabbing half the packs and then putting them in the back in order to shuffle the box. The other thing I've thought about doing is for the very beginning of the live stream, the very first order that's ordered, I thought to do the same thing. Maybe like 
flip the uh, cut the whole box in half so that they're immediately shuffled. Okay, Jacob Kai, he says 10 Japanese team ups. Oh, going deep on the team ups. I see. He wants three McDonald's and three for the reserve. Whoa, you mean like. You mean like the Cosmic Eclipse? Here goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three McDonald's. One, two, three. And three in the reserve. We got one. That does add up to. That means Cosmic's all done. Wait, is it? No, wait, there might be like one more spot. It's very close. Okay, this is for Jacob Kai. <laughs> ha ha. Good luck. Steep. One, two. Why did I say one, two? That was three. And this is like 20. And this is like. 34. Sleep. I buy the last pack of Cosmic. Now, hold on. Somebody might have already done that, okay? Don't buy it yet. Wait for me to say refresh or something. All right, what do we got? We've got right off the bat, Charizard Hollow. I'm telling you guys, Japanese team up is overpowered. We were talking about that not too long ago when it first arrived. And I'm surprised it hasn't seen more action. Here it is, Gengar Mimikyu. I'm telling you guys, OP. Cold. Cold. Snorlax and Eevee. Oh, baby. <laughs> this is why people like Team Up. This is why Team Up English is one of the most expensive Sun and Moon sets. It is a good set. All right, three solid pulls there, including that Charizard. It's ridiculous. How about the McDonald's? We got Snivy. Turtwig, very cool. And... Froki, all right, Froki. Here's a little Charmander non hollow. So, Jacob Kai, he says bag is in the regular overflow. Thanks. That's right, you're right over here. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. This is that new Animal Crossing music. My wife played so much Animal Crossing when it came out. All right, and now we have Christopher Cortez. He says, I would like 10 Japanese team up. You pop my cherry. I do not have a bag. Mr. You gotta call me Poppy Chulo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't call me that. <laughs> All right. Now the other guy just pulled that Charizard, so you're in a little bit of a tougher spot. But let's see what happens. I did to a bet the game in a week. Fast forwarding time. What? <laughs> I didn't understand. I don't think that message was for me. I think he was talking to somebody else. Sneep. All right, Mr. Christopher Cortez. We got pack number one with Latios Latios. Wow. So easy. Here's an Amistar. 
Did you close PayPal? How long are you streaming for? Mr. Richard, if you want to put in an order, go ahead, okay? Here's a really nice looking Gyarados. Cold. Cold. Come on, hot ones. Moltres, Moltres Hollow. Here's Mankey. Now, you only got two packs left. I don't know if you'll have luck with another GX. Let's see, let's see, let's see. No, because you got too many hollows. You got like four hollows. It's usually a sign there's not going to be any more GXs for you. I would say that runs a little on the cold side, sure. Uh, you only got the one GX, and you would have to pay to get it graded as well. I mean, maybe if you could grade the Gyarados and reliably get a 10 on the Gyarados, I think the Gyarados and the Latias together as a 10 could do well. But, yeah, that was a little bit of a cold around, huh? All right, Mr. Christopher Cortez, you'll have better luck next time, though. I can feel it. I did a palm reading on your hand when you were looking into my eyes. And it said, you have a hardship ahead, but then green pastures. Brad, Chris, Cesar Ponce, Carl. I was just wondering, mister, I'm broke now. What? <laughs> Clifton, uh, Christopher, we're looking for Christopher Cortez. Wait. He says, I do not have a bag. I'm crazy, Chris. Chris, I thought you had a bag for some reason. Hey, Chris, let's get you a bonus card. How about that? All right, Chris, you're picking up this Full Art EV VMAX. Ooh. All right, now your pulls are a little bit better. Welcome to the table, Mr. Christopher. Be careful. Don't tell your wife. <laughs> Honey, look, I bought a lot of pokies. <laughs> Next up, we got Ramiro Andrade. He says two Don Russ and two Supreme Rival. All right, Supreme Rival. And two Don Russ. This is for Ramiro Andrade. Mr. Ramiro, will this be your lucky day? All right, starting with the Dragon Balls, we have Piccola and Demigra, monetary, momentary ally. He's just an ally for the moment. Pack number two, we've got Chain Attack Shoggish. He looks like a little chubby cheeks, doesn't he? Now for the Don Rust cards. Is the Cosmic filled? Oh, hold on. It's very nearly filled. Here's Jamal. John Collins, LeBron, you got LeBron James, LeBron James, here you go. So we have Harrison, Jonathan Isaac, I feel like we pulled Jonathan Isaac already, did we? Maybe not. Okay, Jonathan Isaac, Jersey Jersey card, here's a Nico Mannion, Mannion? I think it's Mannion, <laughs> We also have Desmond and Emmanuel Quickly. Not Quickly. Oh, Lordy. Quickly's everywhere. They really want you to have a Quickly. Quickly down under. All right, here's Blake, Ricky, Shabazz, Will, Victor, Colin Sexton. Sex. I would change my last name to Sexton. You know, my last name right now is Caton. Sexton would be way better. Here's Zeke and Sadiq. There you go, Mr. And, uh, Ramiro Andrade. How were those pulls, Mr. Ramiro? Were they good? I don't even know. I think they were great. I think they're pretty good. You open up two packs and you got the uh, jersey sh jersey shirt. Oh, yeah, my back's starting to hurt pretty bad. I'm going to hurt my back opening up these pokies because I'm a slave to pokies. All right, Mr. Ramiro, we're putting you to the left. You're in the box on the left. Ricardo Lycia says, one Cosmic and one Silver Lance. All right, Mr. Lycia. Happy 
Have no fear, we haven't gone anywhere. Just a little lag bubble. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Just me turning all the lights off and running away with this frost lass. Ricardo Lycia. Does he, does he have a bag? We got Ralph, Ryan, R Ran, Russ, Rob, Robin, Robin, Ronald, Raul, Robin, Raul, Ricky. Jeepers, mister, did you switch all your cards while it lagged? They fired up the collider. They fired up the collider. That's what happened. Mr. Lycia, I'm just going to get you a new bag. I can't find your bag. And I'm running out of... He says, yes, I have a bag. Mr. Ricardo Lycia, maybe you can give me a few more details about your bag. How big is it? Is it a real big one? All right, so you got two bags now. I got to keep things moving. Connor Gillespie says, the 10 last matchless fighters. Mr. Need Rare in the box. You got it. It's a box with no rare. No! I don't know if we've ever seen that before. I've seen a box with two rares. In fact, Kara Nichols just pulled one of those today. One, two, three, four, five. Here goes. I won a Silver Lance box the other day. Oh, a whole box of Silver Lance, you say? Sneep. Sneep. So you wouldn't have a big fat bag then. You'd have a normal sized bag. It looks like those other bags on the table. Here it goes. Good luck to Mr. Connor Gillespie. Connor pulling. Oh, no, Connor, you pulled the secret rare Dracovish. Cold. Here's Shaman. What a Shaman. Cold. Articuno. He looks pretty cool. Connor, tonight might not have been your night. Unless you pull another secret rare right now. There's two packs left. Hold, and no, no, you do not. So you do pick up a secret rare, and uh, that's good. Even though it's not the most popular secret rare, it's still good. Good job. It's not alternative art Moltres, but it is this guy. Now I'm king of Pokey Prison and Biden is the emperor. What are you talking about? Connor Gillespie. Connor, you did well, actually. You got that Galarian Rapidash from your friend, James Gower. So your night is still pretty good. So, Mr. Lycia, tell you what, let's move on. It's Adam Sharp next. He says, please live ship my bags in the overflow pile and open more. Open me 30 more battle styles. Mr., I need a new bag. All right. 30. Got a fresh box. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that's 18. I sure am. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. All right, that's 30 packs. This is for Adam Sharp. Adam Mister. I hope Biden put every person without a Charizard in federal prison. That's exactly how I feel. How dare you not have a Charizard? It's like you're, it's like you're a traitor. Sneep. Sneep. Man, there's been a lot of crazy political points of views rising up these days. I feel like it's because you can say anything you want at all because we're actually a very, very, very successful uh, let's say even world, like on a global scale, Europe's doing okay. There's third world countries that are leaving poverty behind and developing a wealthy middle class right now. 
China's become very wealthy. Uh, maybe we're at a point in time where humans are so wealthy that you can be totally out of touch with reality and it just doesn't matter. There's so much wealth that you're gonna be fine. You can believe anything you want and it doesn't hurt you like it would in the past. Because in the past, if you didn't believe something, if you believe something that was like objectively false, you know, you will get bit in the butt later for that. But, oh, maybe that's an exaggeration, though. Maybe it's maybe it's still in play. Maybe you do have to believe the right things. Maybe you still do get bit in the butt. We've got Carcol Meowstic. Here's Marowak. I like Marowak. Golbat. Starting out with some hollows, huh? Gligar and Empoleon V. Sweet. How are you going to pick the winner of the giveaway? So it won't be done in this live stream. It'll be done in the next live stream. It's going to be done with the random comment selector. Charon Octillery. EU is definitely not doing okay. You know, I hear stuff like that. I hear that the EU is struggling in all kinds of ways. Nobody's having children. Uh, there's heavy amounts of taxes. The debt is piling on. And they, they've got economic stagnation, which is really scary. I've heard that, but I, you know, I'm not that involved with EU politics. Here's Carnivine, Carnivine Santa Conda. Tower of Waters. There we go, Empoleon. The queen has lizard blood. I knew it. She goes like that. She she hisses and she eats mosquitoes. Ente Hollow, but he does not look gradable. Here's Mianfiel. Oh, mister. And here's your full art on that half of the box. His single strike mustard. He's going, whatcha? I go to EU and help make babies? What? <laughs> we hold on to our pokies and be millionaires in 20 years' time. That's right. We'll all be pokey millionaires. Second half, we're going to go ahead and start sneaking it up. Europe. I heard that Germany was doing a thing where it's negative interest rates. Sneep. Negative interest rates. So the interest rate is what you pay to borrow money. And the reason you might try some new experimental thing where you have negative interest rate is you then give like a bank money and say that you must loan this out to someone or we'll fine you for not loaning it. And uh, it's never really been done, so nobody really knows what the long-term effects of it are in an economy. What Germany has had negative interest rates for years? I knew it! Here's Tyranitar V. Donald Trump wanted to try that over here. He's like, why don't we do negative interest rates? Here's Gligar. You said EU wasn't having kids. Well, also, I offered to be a good citizen and go help. <laughs> Hey, I'm in Europe. You don't understand how taxes works. If you have any questions, ask me. Tell me how the taxes work, mister. I have lots of questions. Here's Hone Edge. Picking up a lot of hollows. Phoebe. Remoraid. Zubat. Didn't they ban sex in the EU? That's what I heard. Urshifu. What's up, Vani? Vanny? Fainy. Or Beetle. Oh, man. I think we live in the greatest country in the world. I pray that we realize this and fight for our God-given right to party. Do EU women shave? Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Rapid Strike Urshifu Alternative Art. It was waiting for you at the end of your poll. So you do get a nice hot poll. In America, we think taxes should be zero. What do you guys think? I, I don't think that's true. I don't think people think taxes should be zero. I would say conservatives say our taxes should be competitive. Competitive. The world runs on competition. That's, that's I think that's actually a, a, a true statement too, by the way. The world runs on competition, not on uh, maybe like wealth redistribution, which would be welfare. With welfare, you eventually run out of other people's money and then things go bad really fast for your country. <laughs> like, okay, where do you get the next round of money from? We don't have any more money. Quick, print. Print, print, print. Can I send a message to you on Discord? I'm interested in the Rainbow, Espeon, and Umbreon, and Sylveon, and any Eevee Lutrons. 
you can. Uh, I'm not really selling them. I was just going to hold on to them for a long time. So I might not be the right person to try and buy those from because I'm not trying to sell mine. I don't know. I, I guess I could be convinced. I'm trying to decide what, what I would buy with that money other than those particular cards. So Adam Sharp. Wow. Lots of hollows. What do you think would happen if taxes never existed, mister? Well, here's the thing. Taxes, ultimately, with a good government, the point of taxes is to pool all your money together and buy something that is good for society but not profitable. Uh, and so that can be really hard to understand sometimes because usually the free market is very good at figuring out what people want and then providing it uh, because people are profit-driven and they're driven by, you know, wanting to improve their own life. And uh, so the, the free market is very good at that. However, when it comes to like really, really big infrastructure, like let's say uh, maybe like a dam or something that generates electricity or a nuclear power plant, that might be better for the government to do because it's such a large investment and it would benefit so many people that a corporation wouldn't have the money or the, the uh, desire to take the risk on something like that. And it might not be profitable enough for that corporation to bother wanting to do it. So that would be an example of us pulling our money together to buy something greater. But it gets really complicated because there's all kinds of arguments within what I just said, the statement I just said, like, is it really true the government picks out uh, things that will improve our lives better than the private sector? It's very debatable. Adam Sharp. He said live shipping, right? I need a new bag. All right, so we're going to get you some live shipping. Live shipping. You just received ETH. So I was just sent some Ethereum. Just sent some Ethereum. Thanks, Connor. What did you want to use that for? Oops. Joe Biden keeps ignoring his caucus request for a fourth stimulus check. I wonder if he will cave eventually. Oh, man. Elon Musk is putting on full display how much more efficient the private sector is. Yeah, well, Elon Musk is a good example of what the private sector is capable of. But you have to keep in mind, Elon Musk has also benefited from government subsidies, by the way. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go ahead and refresh. We just finished helping Adam. Connor says, three McDonald's for my friend James, Mc uh, James Gower, and two for me, and one live custom. Oh, well, you're in luck. We are just now refreshing the stream, uh, or refreshing the PayPal list. That actually means you will be put in line right now for the live custom. That's how that actually works. Here it goes. Oh, but it's a cold one. I'm sorry, Connor. So that's no good. Let's try those McDonald's. One, two, three, four, five. I think what we're going to have to do for these uh, crypto orders, we're going to have to create a rule, a, a list of rules for how that will really work. So three of these are for James Gower. It's going to be these three right here. One, two, a big reason why government is so slow is because it's now supporting so many jobs that no one wants to be, no one wants to be completed. I think what you're trying to say is there's companies that are contracted to build something and they don't want to, they don't want to finish what they're working on because then they would be out of jobs. Is that what you're saying? Federal Reserve is theft. Uh, I have to agree. There is a point where the American people don't agree with the amount of inflation and debt. And especially, let me just say this, not just the American people, but the American worker. Who's actually generating the money for the rest of society? It's the worker. It always is the worker. And the workers might not agree with this. And so they're still forced into it. And it's just, that's when you are supposed to have, like, I guess a Democratic vote out of the person spending all your money, but Joe Biden and the Democrats actually took uh, a superpower, uh, a super, what do they call that? Not super PAC, super majority. There we go. 
Here we go, third pack. It is Litton. All right. Litton ain't quitting. Litton says, well. That's for James Gower. It is a gift from Connor Gillespie to James Gower. Mr. James. You guys are so nice. In the United States, if you get free health care, it's because you don't make enough. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. So something that a lot of the people on the left forget about is that United States health care, besides being the most advanced health care in the world because it's profit driven, uh, it's also subsidized by the government. It's the most subsidized thing. The most money, welfare money is spent on health care already in the United States. We spend enormous amounts of money to help people with health care. Also, uh, the other thing is, if you get a decent career job, most career jobs will offer you coverage for your health care. All right, Mr. Connor Gillespie. I think people who have the most anxiety about health care is two groups. The very young, they're still in college, and they're wondering, how will I afford health care? And the very old. The very old, there's two groups for the very old. You've got those who have enough money saved up that they can take care of their health needs, and those who... They lived in the best economy in the world ever for their time, right? Our grandma and grandpas did, and their maybe a great grandma, great grandpa. They had the best economy by far. Very little global competition, much lower U.S. debt, and uh, so much opportunity, so much inventions were made in their time. They had the best economy. Houses were cheap. Uh, men made so much money they could go to work and it would provide for the whole family, right? That was their buying power. And yet, here they are, they're older, and they still can't afford their health care. And so that's the other group of the elderly. And they say, well, now the young people are going to pay for it. That's basically what it is. And the young people who really simp for Bernie Sanders don't understand the socialized health care is not for them. I mean, when you're real young, your health problems, although there are some who are exceptions who really need expensive health care, the vast, 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 vast majority of young people do not need much health care. And then on the flip side, the elderly, they, they need health care for everything. The elderly, eyes, hips, knees, every single illness is starting to catch them. Cancer kicks in and cancer is one of the most expensive ones. Uh, but, you know, they have all kinds of problems as they get older. So when you talk about socialized health care, you're, you're talking specifically about a handout for the elderly. And who pays for this? Well, it's young people. Young people pay for the elderly's health care, even though the elderly have had the longest amount of time to save up money. Uh, they've had the best opportunity to save up money. They're like vampiring off of the younger generation. So you can't afford a home. You can't afford kids. There's inflation everywhere. And now you're going to pay for somebody else's health care. That's exactly what's happening. Let me go ahead and log back in. Mr. How many Cosmics are left? Give me a moment. Let me go ahead and pop this into Mr. Connor's bag. We're logging back into PayPal. I think there's one left. Ain't a lot of young people these days overweight. Well, yeah, and that's another subject, too. You can talk about why should we have socialized health care if people choose not to take care of their own health. So if you make an unhealthy choice uh, to eat cookies and you become obese, and there's a lot of scientific facts around obesity. You get cancer earlier. You get diabetes. You get heart problems. Heart, heart, uh, heart disease is the number one killer, right? So you get all these problems. Well, if you're making choices to have pizza and McDonald's and uh, eat out and you want to ignore all the health facts and then you get sick, why should somebody else have to pay for you? So, and, and that's a that's an argument. That's one of the problems with socialism is now everyone's money is pooled together. Well, what if some people are kind of causing all the problems? And what if it's too many people causing all the problems? Well, you can make that argument in the United States because we're all fat. We're all out of shape. I'm chubby. I need to lose some weight. Okay, let's see, let's see. So, Connor. Connor Gillespie was helped, and then it is... We helped Adam Sharp. Jack Gray's turn. He wants one spot on the Cosmic and one mattress. All right. You got it. We live in a society where the young are sacrificed for the old. Well, exactly, and that's a huge problem, actually. That's a really big problem. We're going to enter the Wally reality. Mister, you have too many Charizards. I need one now. Socialism. 
the government moves at a snail pace. Wally is a great explanation to our society, society in the United States. Well, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's harder than ever to be in shape because we're all on our technology. So that's fair enough to say uh, we understand the problem, uh, but nobody seems to have the will to fix the problem, but everyone agrees that somebody else should have to pay for their health care. Okay, but what happens when there's too many people and not enough workers, too many people on the socialism, not enough workers paying for the socialism. Well, what happens is your country becomes very poor and it kind of goes into a nosedive that you can't get back out of at some point, right? Once you become poor, it'd be even more difficult to be wealthy. And uh, I think one of the great illusions that politicians have sort of given young people is that the wealthy people can fix this problem. We can just milk all the money away from wealthy people and this will pay for everyone's health care. But actually the needs of the health care are in the multi-trillions and the wealthy people have maybe like between all of them, maybe like just a few trillions. So the government will need like, what was Bernie Sanders saying? Like $30 trillion to go into debt for health care. And then if you pulled all the money of the wealthy together, it would be like a couple trillion. It, it wouldn't even be that much. Jack Gray. All right. Now give me a minute. I'm going to look for something. Decide which cause is Oh, man. I'm standing up and uh, I'm going to look for... I could, I could open up a different box of cosmetics. Let's see this box real fast. All I know is it's my money and I want it now. What's in this box? Hey, what do you think of that? Time to open up those cosmics. I just ordered three more live. Only 24 spots. All right, so here we go. 24 spots was the right amount. You know why? Because it's 218 minutes into the live stream, so we're over the three hour, three hour limit. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna go uh, left to right. Mike side, oh, Estuardo is the first order. Good luck to Estuardo. He pulls Como O and Clay. Ooh. Mister, do you think we need more immigrants if we cannot have enough babies? Well, yeah, that's actually a really, really um, hot button issue. So if you have a shrinking economy because you're not having enough children, does that mean in order to prop up your economy, should you import a bunch of workers from another country? Well, how, do you, how would you feel about that uh, if you were Japanese? Do you think the Japanese have some of the biggest birth rate declines in the whole world? Should Japan open up its borders and import a bunch of workers from another country? So that's Estuardo. Let's get Mike's side next. Mr. Mike's side. Mike's side is number two. Blacephalon Flygon. All right. I forget that Flygon's even in this set. He's all right. 
So Mike's side would be, is he all the way up top? Nicholas Lenhart's up top. Here's Mr. Miguel. Boop. I'll pump out some kids too, but don't come knocking for child support. <laughs> hey, you'll raise my baby for me, right? Javier Arroyo. Mister, if I send three dollars, can I get a pack of XY Evolutions? Says Mr. Midnight. Um, I think you're asking to adjust your order. Is that what you're asking? It depends on what your previous order was. Oh, your previous order was probably Cosmic. Yes, sir, you sure can. I worry about productivity falling if we can't have enough babies. We may have to incentivize high-skilled laborers to come into the United States. It says, but Thompson. Mr. Next time you should collect the names of the people first to save a little time for yourself. Maybe we can afford our own kids if we weren't paying for theirs, says Philippe. Uh, I agree. So one of the problems with a welfare state is the government begins to tax you so much that now it's hard for you to imagine having a family of your own and living in a certain uh, quality of life because you can't afford anything. The government taxes you on the goods you buy. It taxes your income. It taxes the business it, uh, for its income. It taxes the business when the business tries to buy new product. It taxes the manufacturer who made the product. It just taxes so many times uh, is shocking. And your buying power shrinks. Your ability to buy goods shrinks. And all of a sudden, you're like, how am I so broke? I feel like I work all the time and I, I can't afford anything. I have to pull out debt to have a car. I have to pull out debt to have a home. I have to pull out, you know what I mean? So this becomes a big problem. And all of a sudden, nobody's having babies anymore. Uh, well, it's because your buying power is disappearing because your government's taking it all and giving it to someone else or putting it somewhere very inefficient. All right, Javier, you ready? Good luck. We've got Victini and Erica. Sweet. Actually, those are cold. <laughs> I'm just saying sweet. Mr. Oroyo, did you know that Jap Japan had natives before colonizers came and become the Japanese of today? Not sure what happened with natives, though. <laughs> Here's Mr. Oroyo. The colonizers, everyone hates colonizers except that the history of pretty much every group was colonization. In fact, uh, I was just watching a film that was studying tribes in Ethiopia, and they were walking around with AK-47s. Why? So they could murder each other so that their uh, cows, they have some sort of animal that's like a cow, can be the cows that feed in that pasture. So they kill each other to take control of the land. It's still happening today. Shocking that people are so surprised by this. That's like all humans do. Mike Hoover. And I think that we're all very moralistic. So we go, oh, no, 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 no. No uh, colonizing, no taking of land. We can't allow that. But there are no rules for the person who can do the land taking. He goes, I don't care if it's immoral. I'm going to take your land and you can get mad at me. And what are you going to do about it? And I almost feel like one of the mistakes uh, in the reality checks is that people don't realize that's really just how the world is run. We're so well conditioned to be moralistic and to be uh, good and nice that we forget uh, we're basically living in the jungle still. There are no rules. Mike Hoover, only the rules that the powerful impose on you, and the powerful impose those rules through power and violence. And that, that's essentially where their power comes from, from violence. In the end, all power is rooted in violence. That's because, you know, there's like money and uh, money power, right? Like you can pay somebody to do something for you. But in the end, when you need to do something, when you need to enforce government, when you need to enforce rules, it always comes down to enforcing it with a weapon. Mike Hoover, Mr. Mike, it has to be done with a weapon in the end. Here we are, Mr. Mike Hoover. Look at this, he pulled a lovely Mega Low Pony Jigglypuff. Only rule, buy and collect Pokemon, that's right. The rule and power, Pokies. So we're done with Mike Hoover, now John Gamio. Mr. John. Oh, he pulls one of these wonderful character cards. It's coughing. Sweet. Mr. Gomeo. That was it, right? Yeah, okay. Hey, that's pretty good. That's kind of a snipe right there. 
And Mr. John was gonna be shipped. Here we go, he's got his bag. I'm gonna go ahead and slip this in. So now he's gonna get his coughing. Richard Johnson, he's got two packs. Now, of course, uh, the, the, the moralists, the people who are very moralistic, see this idealistic possibility where we all get along and nobody does any land taking and we all shake hands and kumbaya and humans turn into like a, cities, turn into paradise and we're all better off for it. It's great. Uh, you know, that's sort of like the whole hope for a better future. The problem is the execution of that idealism is actually very similar to what happens with communism. Communism and socialism, they're all like, hey, your stuff is my stuff. We can be uh, no, no need for private property. We're all one, one group. We're all one people, one globalist loving gr group of people. So that's sort of the, um, well, they, they like to pretend that this is a super intelligent way of thinking. Like that's the future of the human race is much smarter than uh, the opposite point of view, which would be the private property conservative point of view. Um, but it just always seems to fall apart. And I believe the reason it falls apart is because humans very naturally uh, construct power hierarchies to dominate each other. And we dominate each other for control over limited resources. So the real problem is the limited resources. If you can make it so that they're unlimited, I think we could have our uh, you know, communist utopia, but it's the limited resources always gets people. And in the end, people struggle to gain control of those and live better than their neighbor. Richard Johnson, Matt Thurgood, Brian Ochoa. Where we put Richard Johnson? Is he up top? Oh, here's Ricardo Lycia. I found him. Mr. Ricardo. The first matrix I designed was quite naturally perfect. It was flowers. <laughs> so I found Mr. Ricardo Lycia's bag. But what about Richard Johnson's bag? Robin. We are slaves for Pokemons. No, sir. Pokemons will set you free. <laughs> Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> Is that the one with the old guy in the chair and he's got all the smart things to say? <laughs> now, where is Richard Johnson? I swear we just had his bag. Is is he like an overflow bag? Let me show you how bad it is for a second. You guys have to understand how hard it is to uh, sort of keep this all organized. Check this out. So this is what the right side of the table actually looks like. Do you see this? these are all in the way? Well, here's the overflow all over there. You see all these bags? It's like a little card falling over. Ev Ever Treminio. It's, uh, it's a hot mess. I mean, it's not a mess. It's, it's organized. It's just that... There's so much of it. I can't reach it all. I can't reach it all. So I don't remember what we would have done with Richard Johnson's bag. Let's give him a new bag. Oh, he says new bag right there. Okay, perfect. Sweet. Robots aren't supposed to make mistakes. That's true. So, hey, I've been subscribed for a while. Love the content. I'm watching the stream with my friends. It's his birthday today. Can you shout out Mr. Nick? Happy birthday, Mr. Nick G. All right, so, Richard. Hold on, give me a moment. There we go. Richard Johnson. All right, Richard. I'm tossing you up there. Next up, we have... Alex PSX. Good luck, Mr. Alex. Mr. Alex. If a robot was programmed to make mistakes, was it really a mistake? <laughs> Boom, my mind blowing up. <laughs> he got spammed. What? All right, not bad. One pack, one hit. Mr. Alex PSX. Now, Alex, I know you've got a new bag. James would pay for TCC to open his legs. What are we talking about? Are we still talking about Pokemon? I don't remember these Pokemon. Are these the Pokemon at home? Mom, I want Pokemon. We have Pokemon at home. Mr. Sign, what am I? Reverse Hollows. 
sign one of your reverse hollows, Mister. You'll have to ask. Uh, you have to ask Mister. Alex PSX for one of those signed hollows. Speaking of which, here's Alex PSX. I try not to sign very many cards, so that's that's why I say that. And I do that because if I sign a bunch of cards, then none of the signed cards will have any value anymore. Uh, I read about that. The trick is to not not to sign too much. Jeff Leon. Mr. Jeff. Pulling gloom. Jeff Leon. It's not like I'm even that famous. That's a funny thing. Just got a small following over here. And I had a, a decently sized following for Monster Hunter, but those guys have probably moved on a little bit. Michael Cusick. Mr. Michael. Mr. Michael. Are you ready, Michael Cusick? I don't think you're ready. You're a fame mouse. Michael Cusick. Pack number one is Helioptile. Pack number two... Zatu. All right. And that's for Michael Cusick with an M. It's Michael Cusick getting shipped. Matt Thurgood, John Gamilla. No, he's not getting shipped. Ah, Michael Cusick was the guy who made all the clever trades today, huh? <laughs> oh, Michael. I tried to offer that one guy a whole box of matchless rather than 12 packs. All right, next up we got GJM. Mr. GJM, good luck. This will be the Charizard. No, that's going to be wishy-washy. Okay, just wishy-washy. Earthquake in Lake Tahoe. Uh-oh. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> what? All right, here you go, Mr. GJM. Now we have our Marquez. There's a Zard in Cosmic. I'm still on tutorial on Monster Hunter, mister. Monster Hunter is pretty fun, isn't it? I think my problem is I played it too much. I played a little bit too much. Okay, our Marquez pulls Tag Call and... Ooh, he pulls the Stoutland. Nice. Now, Mr. Marquez was one of the guys who also wanted live shipping. I had to write a card down. Here it is. He's got a very fat bag. There we go. How much debt do you think we could incur before we go to war? Great question. I don't know if we'll even go to war. The truth is, while we become more in debt, China will build a fantastic army using our own money against us. That's right, we send the money, so does the rest of the world, and then they use that money to buy a fantastic military. And uh, so why would we go to war with somebody who could potentially win? They might beat us. It would be a misstep. And it shows that there was a real change in power. I feel like the most countries know that war is too expensive, everyone's broke. Well, also nuclear missiles and all that, but, you know, I don't even... I feel like technology could be so advanced that maybe nuclear missiles would never make it to the uh, country because we could shoot them out of the sky. So James Gower, you ready, James? Two packs. You know, I bet there's all kinds of military equipment that nobody's aware of. Every military is keeping it quiet. That's what I suspect. James Gower, everyone's keeping it under wraps. Why would you tell your opponent what you have? You'll lose your advantage. Sandy Gas, they'll copy you. Toga Tomaru, all right. That's for our friend, Mr. James Gower. Sorry, James, nothing too wild on those two packs. Do you think the UFOs are government tech? A uh, very, 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 very likely, yes. It's not that I don't believe in aliens. I just think it's unlikely that aliens have visited us. I think aliens very likely exist somewhere. Uh-oh, there we go. My computer trying to shut down. I think aliens probably exist somewhere. I just don't think they could have reached out to us without more like signals or something. All right, that's Golette for Mr. Gomia. 
John Gomia. Now we're going to get three packs for Mr. Jacob Ty. Mr. Jacob. One, two, three. UFOs and aliens come from our toilet. Think about it. <gasps> he knew it. We got to we gotta wrap them up and send them to Area 51. I don't believe in aliens unless they have hot, sexy aliens. True. Okay, Jacob Kai. No, I think there's definitely... Ooh, look at this. That's a hit, actually. That reverse hollow Sylveon, nice. I think there's definitely an argument that there, there has to be aliens somewhere. Or over a very long period of time, like let's say a million years from now, there has to be some kind of aliens. Draw energy. All right. Picking up draw energy. Very cool. Mr. Jacob. And that's your three packs, Jacob. That's Jacob Kai. We are generating so much bulk, I don't know what to do with it all. I really think this channel has helped my viewers become more centered. Hard to listen to corrupt politicians. Toro Teal, I actually have a really useful way of thinking to share with you guys. And it really has helped me a lot in life. And the what I always ask myself is, who's trying to take my money? Who's trying to take my money? You know, uh, it's my point of view that very, very few people in your life will help you and ask for nothing in return. Primarily, maybe your parents. The funny thing is, not even everyone's parents will do that. So people who are truly like angels to you, you know, who will really take care of you and for nothing in return. Maybe it. And then after that, maybe your spouse. So whenever something is going on around you and people are like telling you, you should believe this, you should believe that, you should believe this, you got to ask, who's who wants my money? Who's trying to take my money? Because it always, almost always goes back down to money. Somebody's always trying to take it. Religion and government and business. Uh, you know, when I sell these packs, I get a little money. When you sell a hamburger to somebody, you get a little bit of money. But, you know, when somebody tries to, t to sell you an ideology, they're almost always enriching themselves or the group that they represent. And that's it. And so once you start to realize that's the whole world, then you can stop being so affected by everything you hear. You can stop believing in everything you hear because that's really what manipulation and, and mind control is, always comes down to. It comes down to the ability to manipulate somebody else's belief system. Uh, and if you want to break out of that, you just got to realize everyone's after your money. And that's really all that humans do. So you know how they humans do only a few things like food, sex, and sleep. Well, actually, there's a fourth thing called resource gathering. So humans actually do all four. Sleep, eat, sex, get stuff. That's, the, that's how humans really are. That's the lizard brain speaking, right? And even if you had all the stuff you needed, you would still go out and take stuff from some other guy. That's how humans really are. It's crazy. So... You want the empty cosmic box? Well, this is going to be for our friend Jack Gray. And it is. Oh, we pick up the Mimikyu character art. All right. Five things. Pokemon. That's right. The fifth thing would be Pokemon. But technically, Pokemon is resource gathering. So we've already counted that one. Nice pull, Mr. Jack. That's a snipe. Please don't throw it away. <laughs> How much and how many packs can a person buy? What's up, Jennifer? Jennifer, we're gonna have another box break of the uh, top series two, but this time when we do the, the box break, we're going to weigh the packs out very carefully and we're going to try and open the heavy packs first and we're gonna try and open up the, light, the lightest packs second and then we'll allow people to decide whether or not they wanna open their remaining packs. Alex is like, I want the empty box. Alex, it's not, it's not a rare empty box. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take these, and we're going to do a little combine. There we go. Sweet. Thank you, everyone. That was very cool. I would say the best pull that came out of the Cosmic Box tonight 
uh, believe it or not, it was the last pack, Jack Gray's Mimikyu. I think I saw that going for about $250 as a 10. Sweet. Jack Gray with the snipe. We might end up opening those fossil packs early. All right, well, let's see if there's any more orders. We have Mr. Matt John Thurgood. He says, for live shipping and postage. Hey, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Christopher Michael says, spot in the cosmic. Uh, was it Christopher who said he was going to send three more dollars? Let's go ahead and refresh. Who wants my money? <laughs> yeah, somebody's always after your stuff. And they act like they love you. You know, they act like you're their best friend. And, oh... Imagine what life could be like if you just agreed with me. Also, here, give me some of your money. Somebody's always after it. And that's because the world is ran on resources. And it makes me super suspicious of everyone. Let's see, where were we? Here we are. Christopher Michael. And Christopher Michael does send three more dollars. So we're going to open him an evolutions pack. Mr. Christopher Michael. What I like about business guys, so business guys want your money, but what I like about them, they're the best group actually. You know why? Because they actually give you stuff. So a businessman, if you give him money, he'll give you a jet ski, which is actually something you can enjoy. He's like the best guy out of the group is the, the businessman. The religious guy's maybe the worst one. The religious guy tells you he'll get you to heaven and that you have to donate or else you won't get to heaven. And he gives you virtually nothing, but maybe like false hope, I want to say. And that's why there's like religions in every culture. You know why? It's because religion is a fantastic way to extract money out of people. It's a really good way to get money from people. You don't even need a product. You just talk well. I, could, I think I could do it. If I wanted to uh, kind of like run some sort of activist group uh, and, and basically that's what an activist group is in politics it's almost like politics religion if i wanted to run some kind of group i'd be like you can change things with your donation donate now you know what i mean you don't get anything it just goes to some other guy and you feel good about it but uh, you know he was just a really good talker that's all it's actually crazy the the longer you think about it it gets really crazy to focus on that for a while like wow people really do just give their money away to somebody who talks well that's wild all right let's see big t chris hayes here we go christopher michael so the religious guys bother me the most because those guys always demand your money they got a they got a book and the book says you must donate money to this religion or you won't go to heaven. It's like, wow, I guess God is just bad with money. He needs your money. He can. He's the creator of all things, but also you need to give his money to you. Sounds something like the creator of the religions made up, not like something God would have made up. Alex says, cut one pack of NBA. What? All right, you got it. One pack of Don Russ basketball being sliced for Mr. Alex. So we got Terrence, Chris, uh, something, Hassan, Clint, Kendrick. Here's Malik Beasley, Aaron Nesmith, and Killian Hayes. We're putting these cards to death. Sneep. How much was a pack of Cosmic? A pack of Cosmic was $22. I guess if you wanted to order one or two more packs, you could still do that. Uh, but we are really wrapping up, okay? We, you can open up another pack of Cosmic without having to go on a reserve list at this point. Next up, we got Ardenan. Ardenan, what's up? He says, hey, Mr. One Live Custom, I have a bag. All right. Steep. Cobalion. Oh, no, it wasn't a hot one. I thought it was going to be a hot one. People should take solace and find comfort in reality. The bitter truth is also... Well, I, I just don't think that's even possible. That's the problem. You know, like the longer you focus on the idea that life is temporary and that you're going to die and maybe everything's meaningless, it will make you go crazy. And that's why you, you almost have to have religions to keep humans calm um, because if they weren't calm, they would just become super chaotic and 
Maybe they'd be nihilists and hedonists and maybe they'd become violent or or they're going to do the opposite thing. They're just going to be like, nah, it's all going to be great, man. It's going to be a hopeful, happy ending. I don't believe in all that nihilism. Maybe there's a heaven. You know what I mean? So you're you're falling on that spectrum somewhere, but it's going to happen. That's where the that's another reason why you got to have religion is because there's always going to be that constant uh, fear of passing away. And you're, you're totally surrounded by people who are dying all the time, like the COVID death numbers. How is it that we're able to not freak out from our own anxiety while everyone around us is freaking dying? You know what I mean? Okay, next up, we got Juan Garcia. He says, one more live custom. You got it, Mr. Juan Garcia. Woo. This one is going to be a cold pack. Mr. Did my order go through? Just want to make sure I'm not talking for no reason. Uh, let me double check, okay? Juan Garcia, here you go. I thought that was going to be the hit, Mr. Mr. Garcia. We were pretty deep. So I see Kara Nichols, Luis Rodriguez, and James Gower. So you're you're in, but there's there's two people ahead of you. Kara Nichols says two match lists. You got it. Yeah, people can't handle that concept of passing away. It's real tough. So, but anyways, the third group is the political group. This is the third group that wants your money, and they have a way of extracting money from people. Uh, they establish order. The government establishes rules and order, and they do this, how? Through violence. They're the violent group. So what the government ultimately does, the government creates a violent group called a military, and then it says anyone else tries to take power and change the laws will kill you. That's what a government does. It, it does a bunch of other stuff, but in the end, if it can't do that first thing, none of the other things matter at that point because some, some other guy will establish an even more violent group and they'll pick the laws. So it's really interesting. You got the businessmen. They try to actually meet your needs. Businessmen want your money and they try to make you happy. Uh, you know, Jeff Bezos, he wants you to buy uh, a dildo on Amazon. Dildos make you happy. And then he goes and makes some money. Uh, the priests, they want you to feel better about dying. Uh, but conveniently also, you're going to have to give them some money because if you don't, you won't go to heaven. And then, uh, you know, and they got to build their big cathedrals and live like glorious popes. And then you've got the political group and they're saying, Nobody else gets to set any rules. If you try to, we'll kill you. And, and also, this border is my border. Uh, this is all mine, right? So it's really interesting watching these groups sort of like they constantly talk to you. You're like the sh you're the sheep, right? We're the sheep. We're the, we're the, the golden goose. We're the cow. They're going to milk us. Uh, and they're constantly talking to you, trying to tell you, here's what you need to do to give us more of your money. <laughs> it's crazy, actually. Here, you need to go do the right thing to make more money for us. All right, so next up, we got Luis Rodriguez, who says six shining fates. All right, Luis. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mr. Lewis, you also want live shipping. Let me see if you already got a bag. Dillas don't make me happy. Make your girlfriend happy. Luis Rodriguez. Here he is. All right. Sweet. Wow, we don't need the L box as much. My bag is Luis Rodriguez 90. Sweet. Trump is a businessman. Is the businessman the best option? So the businessman is the nicest guy who takes your money because his whole thing is he's trying to figure out how to meet your your needs better than any other businessman. So he competes amongst all the other businessmen. And then all of a sudden we got iPhones, we got TVs, we got nice medicines, we got so many things because of business. And they're my favorite group. And the socialists hate them. I don't know why. Because, you know, when you look into other countries that don't do very good business, uh, sure, they're all closer to each other in sort of like the class hierarchy, but they're all much poorer is also true. So I like the business guys because they're innovators, they're makers, they're builders, uh, and they're servicemen. They actually do the things that you don't want to do. And we all go, we all go into business. Most of us do. Most of us don't work in the government. Most of us go into business to take care of each other's needs. 
And uh, businesses do shady things though, right? So like uh, polluting the earth is a big problem, which you have to agree, you're complicit in that. When you go out to eat and you get a little foam, whatever, with a little plastic fork and you throw it in the trash can, well, that, that goes in the landfill. So you get mad at the corporation for all their pollution while every single day you do plenty of the polluting yourself. It's kind of like a whole, we demand the pollution almost. So it's like a, it's a whole problem for the entire human race to try and figure out how do we solve our pollution problems. But you know who's best suited for figuring those problems out? You would think that it's government, but it might be business. If business can find a way to profit off of pollution, then this will actually get rid of the pollution. The alternative is the government will have to forcibly tax us or tax the government, uh, not the governments, the corporations who will then uh, have to raise their prices because the supply side of their products has become more expensive. Well, the government will have to tax us to fix the pollution. At some point, it will have to be fixed because it will start to affect our lives and then we'll take notice of it. It already does, I think. Grimmel Snarl Shiny. All right, this is for our friend, Mr. Luis Rodriguez. He needs to be shipped. All right, we'll sleeve this up. Wow, mister, you're still alive. What's up, Emily? I am still alive. We're heading towards six hours or five hours again. All right, there you go, Lewis. I'm gonna mark you down for live shipping. Boop. All right, you're good to go. Now we have James Gower. James Gower says one cosmic, two custom. If the cosmic is taken, I'll do three customs. So uh, let me think about it for a second, how we should proceed with this. <laughs> so he's he's having an order where he he's saying either two live customs and a cosmic or three live customs. Uh, okay, so I, I'm thinking about it and I understand what we have to do here. So it can't be up to James Gower how many cu live customs are purchased in this case. The problem is as time goes by, James Gower becomes more aware of how many cold packs have been pulled. This is the problem. This is the problem with uh, letting people uh, let's say when a, when a product is sold out, letting them jump in to the live custom box. Mr. James, you requested two and a Cosmic. What I can offer you is I can offer you two live custom boosters and a Cosmic pack or two live custom boosters and a refund on the Cosmic pack. But I can't allow you to pick up the third Cosmic. I'm sorry, the third live custom. You would have had to tell me that you wanted all three live customs. Uh, and that would have had to been your exact order. He says, no, because we filled the reserve list already. Right, but uh, we had the exact same problem happen yesterday again with Adam uh, Mundorf. We ran out of tops packs. He said, well, go ahead and throw me in the live custom booster. We can't, we can't do that. So you have to, he says it was for that reserve list. Yeah, I get that. So what I can do is I can open up two live customs and I can open up a, a, a cosmic eclipse if you want. We still have more. But what I can't do is I can't open three live customs, okay? It, it would be against the rules to do that. I can only open up two. Mister, these, these live custom booster rules have been in play for like three days now. It's pretty wild actually, because usually we have uneventful nights where this never happens. But yeah, so the rules are when a product runs out, you may not use that money to then buy more, or not more, but a live custom booster. So I wasn't hunting for anything. I just wanted to help fill in the list to get it over with. No problem, James. Uh, it's just that the rules are for live custom boosters. When a product sells out, you cannot use that money to buy uh, live custom boosters. So just let me know what you'd like me to do. I can get you a refund on the Cosmic pack, or I can get you, we actually have more Cosmic. I can get you another pack of Cosmic. That's up to you, but I can't get you the three packs of Cosmic. I can only get you two, okay? Tricky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, when a product sells out, I cannot change it over to a live custom order. He says, give me a live custom. Or I'm saying, give me a cosmic. There you go. All right, cosmic and two live customs. I know it's tough, but remember, if we were to change it from two to three, that changes somebody else's uh, polls. So it's really important. We got these, we got these pre-made rules and we follow them. We got Zatu and 
combi. Ah, now everyone wants to know what's in this one. Well, it's the Steam Siege pack. That means it's the best one. All right. And over here, we got Cosmic Eclipse. It's not tough. We had a reserve list, and it filled. All right, here we go. Pro will pass. Woo! Mr. James Gower, I'll go ahead and sleeve this. He says, that's so upsetting, man. Uh, Adam Moondorf said the same thing. We just did the same thing to Adam Moondorf. So go talk to him. But you know, if, if we had allowed Adam Moondorf to jump in when the top series pack sold out, he would have actually sniped a pull away from somebody else who was also in line. So we have strict rules on what you're allowed to do with your money when a set uh, when we sell out of something. And one of the things you may not do is put that money into live custom boosters. There's a very important reason for that is because as time passes, you gain a knowledge of how many cold packs have been pulled out of a live custom booster box. So you, you, you run into a situation where you have pre-hand knowledge of the box and you're not allowed to make a, a, an immediate decision on whether or not to have more live customs because you, you're deciding to buy more of them with that knowledge. And we don't allow that. Uh, and we do that to preserve the randomness of the box, okay? So I, I think if you sleep on it, it will make a lot of sense. All right, here we go. Here we go. Next up, we got Mr. Connor Gillespie. He says, one more alive. Let's see if it's the hit. <laughs> it could be. It is. <laughs> PSA 10, number 132. And that is exactly why we can't allow you to choose between two and three packs. It can't work that way. You have to, you have to say, I want three packs of the live custom boosters. Because what you would have done, you would have taken that from Connor Gillespie. That should be Connor Gillespie's. All right, Mr. Connor. Let's see what it was. I don't even know what it is. Ugh. That That is Connor Gillespie's, and you would have taken it from him if I'd allowed you to jump into the live custom booster box at that time. And see, if we had just pulled a hot card, you wouldn't have told me to do that. All right, so let's see. Whoop. Ditto. And I'm not saying you specifically were trying to snipe, but I'm saying somebody else could have sniped. All right, there it is. Congratulations, Mr. Connor. I did say that if the reserve list was full, I wanted the live customs. That makes no sense. Right, but you're, you're not listening. So again, when we run out of a product, what we don't allow, this is a rule. We already established this rule. It's written down in our Discord. When we run out of a product, you may not use that money to immediately buy a live custom booster pack. What you can do with that money, you can get back in line for the live, live, uh, live customs, but you can't say, buy me this or that. It, it's not allowed for the live customs. We don't allow that. And that's because you would have taken this pack from Connor Gillespie. This is Connor Gillespie's pack. It would not be fair for him for you to be able to do that, to choose between this or that. All right, there we go. Yeah, you would be taking this from Connor. Boop. All right, there we go. Johnny Ceruzzi says, Hey, mister, I'd like to order one box of Phantom Rage. God King Lunar says it makes perfect sense. You're not allowed to search the live customs. Exactly. That's a very short way of saying that. Uh, again, it's an issue of if you're allowed to choose the number of live customs you're going to have much later in the list, uh, you, you gain a knowledge of what's, how many cold packs have come out of the box. All right, you ready? Mr. Mister. So what I'm saying is at the time that you put in the order for the this or that, you knew that there had been no hot pull out of the box yet. All right. Oh, man, I can barely reach this. Phantom Rage. All right, here goes. Stop the count. You shouldn't have asked if I hit. I sent for another right away after I read that, to be honest. Not a valid coupon. All right, so this is a whole box of Fan of Rage for our friend, Johnny Ceruzzi. Live custom reserve list incoming. 
<laughs> I've thought of doing that, Toro Teal, a live custom booster reserve list. I've thought of doing that. Uh, but that, if you think about it, it's not really a live custom booster pack anymore. Sleep one, two. Yeah, the whole idea of the live custom boosters is they can get opened immediately. People just always have problems with the live customs. Right, but exactly. Well, that's because this really important stuff is there. Mister, I knew there was one spot left on the reserve list when I ordered. Does that make sense? I said if someone ends up ordering that spot, I want all custom instead. Yeah, but see, what I'm trying to say is if a hot pull had just come out of the cosmic box, you might not have told me that. You might have said, uh, if the cust you know, if if the list is already full, give me uh two vivid instead, you know what I mean? So what I'm saying is as the line is being built up, you can't choose between two and three packs as an as an option in your order, because that's that's going to be based on like knowledge on the packs. No is said if it got ordered, switch to a custom. When Again, the rules are really clear. When we run out of a product, you cannot put that money into live custom boosters. So we had those rules. We just applied them yesterday to Adam Moondorf. He was also upset because I, I don't know if he missed a pull. Did Adam Moondorf miss a pull because of that? But see, he didn't even miss a pull. It just wasn't his pull because those rules were long-standing rules that we follow every time. We follow the same set of rules each time we open the live customs. So when we have live custom boosters and we run out of a product, one of our one of our strict rules that we don't break is you cannot put your, your remaining money into the live customs. You would have had to ask me to give you three live customs. You would have had to have asked me for that. And not like, uh, give me two in this or give me three. You would have just had to have said, I want three live customs. I'm in for three live customs, see? But I, I get what you're saying, James Gower. But you might not have been trying to snipe it or you might not have been thinking so hard about what you were doing. I'm just saying that you can't do what you would try, what you attempted to do, we don't allow. That's why I'm trying to explain to you. You can't just hover around with your money and slot yourself in. If you don't like its rules, don't buy. Be nice to him, okay, guys? Nobody, I don't want anyone being mean. Hey, mister, do you know how much longer you're going to stream for? A hundred hours, mister. It's the 24-hour live stream. Come on, of course. Here's Gizmek. Mister, do you know how much longer you're going to stream for? It's easier to just say that you should order what you're ordering. Don't put an if-then order than what you... Exactly. It can't be if-then. Well, it could be if-then if uh, with other booster packs. You could do an if-then for evolutions. You could do an if-then for... Uh, I don't care what you do it for, but what you can't do if then with is the live custom boosters. Live custom boosters, you need to tell me that you want three of them. Uh, because if you say, I'll take two, unless you, if you run out of this product, give me another live custom. It's got to say, it's got to say three, because we don't allow you to buy more product than the live custom when we run out of something. Raid Raptor, pretty sure people hate me already. Anyways, nobody hates you, Connor. Connor, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. My utent, bye, bye, bye. It's all good. Pretty well-known rule. Yeah, we, we just applied that exact rule to Adam Mundorf yesterday. And Adam Mundorf, I think it took him a minute, but I think he, I think he kind of understood it. You know, I think after the the frustration subsides, I think he understood it. Have the Yu-Gi-Oh boxes been selling decently? We're almost out of them. So uh, these uh, Blazing Vortex and Phantom Rage, we'll be out of them in no time. But yeah, I think uh, Adam Moondorf, he just needed a minute to steam off. And I think he understood later why the rules have got to be that way. You know what I mean? It's got to be that way because we have to be the most fair to everyone. And those are the most fair rules. We got Tri-Brigade Karis. We got Perfect Sync. Dude, this is way different than that. I wasn't out of order. That was the difference. Connor says, or Adam says, Connor, how dare you take my favorite Ditto card? Same rule for everyone. Time to replace the Yugi's with Digi's. All right, we're getting Diggies. Virtual World Beast Jiu Jiu. Here's Raiders Knight. Dual Avatar Feet. Infernoble Knight Captain Oliver. Here's Virtual World Dragon Long Long. 
UA Hyper Stadium. Mister, I'm going to start watching Ozark. Oh, no. Mayutan Ultimus. Oh, no. We got Dual Avatar Empowered Kongyo. Virtual World Roshi. All right, that's your whole box. No Starlight Rare. No Zeus either. Where's that Zeus? Mister, how are you going to do the giveaway tonight? Uh, the giveaway is not tonight. The giveaway will be tomorrow night. However, we start letting people sign up for it tonight. So if you go to the top of the description, you'll see the instructions on how to join the giveaway. But the giveaway will actually be decided in the next live stream. One box of Phantom Rage. This is for Johnny Ceru Ceruzzi. Mr. Johnny, let's find your bag. Jose Ponce, Joseph Gyron. Jonathan. All right, we'll toss this up here. Mr. Johnny. John Loman, John Rines, Jose Sanchez, Joshua. Jonathan Cruz. John Hincapi. Where is Johnny Ceruzzi? Does he say he needs a new bag? He says new bag. I'm so dumb. All right. I got to start looking for that before I start goose hunting. Seven p.m. I commented on the video already. I was just wondering how it will be randomized. Oh, there's all kinds of web tools that randomize it. All right, here you go, Mr. Johnny. I hear Butt Thompson is famous now. People love Money Heist. Johnny Ceruzzi. There you go. I thought that Ozarks was too, uh, I don't know. It was like too depressing or something. All right, I'm doing a refresh. I hear Mr. Fakes' his accent to not sound like the people. That's right. That's right. This is my real uh, accent. I speak like this. Well, I don't trust the government. Government's always trying to inject you with stuff. All right, we're, re we're refreshed. <laughs> I'm tripping over my words. Jonathan Westfall says, One evolution. Ah, oh, man. Back's really hurting again now. Jonathan Westfall with Machoke Me Daddy and Machoke, Machoke My Chicken. Haunter, Onyx, Weedle, Machop, Tangela, and Vulpix. Oops. It kind of shows you I have a lot of money doing this, but this life ain't good. It actually sucks. This Pokey Day. One evolution for Jonathan Westfall. Here we are. Whoop. John Loman says, Rig me up, Mr. John Loman. Mr., you can just refund my live pack so you can go to bed earlier. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Garcia. Wait, that's not Garcia's. Or, this isn't even your pack. This is John Loma's pack. I just, I heard you speaking and I thought that this was your pack. You can just refund my pack. Oh, man. All right. Let me go get that refund. <laughs> Joseph Hayes, Joseph, Jonathan, Joshua, Josh. Where is John Loma? There has been so much live custom booster drama. But that is why we have those rules beforehand so that when we have these situations, we don't have to think about the philosophy behind how we run it. We just follow those rules. And I think that's really important for these because they are pricey. Next up, we got Juan Garcia. He says, one more live custom booster. Mr. Zamacho, he said to keep the vart. True baby mom. All right, he goes... Oh, look at this, Mr. Juan Garcia. You got a hit anyways. PSA 5, number 157. 
you were going to have me refund that. Well, you said refund, so I got to get that refund together. Be right back. He said refund. You all heard him. Is this it? Oh, that's not it. Hold on. Let me grab the whole box. There's a PSA. Oh. Oh, it's this one right here. Typhlosion. <laughs> he said refund. You all hold. You all heard it. All right. There you go. Mr. John, uh, not Camilla, Juan Garcia. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Very Lucky. This has me very, made me very, very sad in the pants. <sighs> Ooh. He says, what? I know. That's generous. Next up, we have Jennifer Penna. What's up, Jennifer? We haven't had an order from Jennifer in a while. Jennifer says, can I please get one Silver Lance? One Jet Black Spirit. I do have a bag. I know you have stopped bulk, but I have previously paid for bulk before the rule change. I would like to have live shipping and would appreciate if most of the bulk is Japanese cards if possible. Okay. Do I have a Jennifer box? I do not see a Jennifer box. Um, hmm. I guess what I could do for you, Jennifer, is I can grab like a handful of bulk for you. Maybe like up to 10 ounces or something. Sneep. He says, I need that. <laughs> he said refund. You all heard him. <laughs> Imagine if I said, okay, I will refund it, but I also get to open it to see what you would have pulled. Oh man, that would have stopped your heart. <laughs> All right, Miss Jennifer, here is the Gardevoir Hollow that you pulled from your, your packs. And you said you want some Japanese bulk? All right, so Japanese bulk. I should have plenty of Japanese bulk. It's all buried. Do I have some Japanese bulk on the... Maybe I can unbury it. <laughs> I have a ton of Japanese bulk, but it's like buried right now. Hmm. I'll double your refund. Don't summon Mary. Book in exchange for feed picks? All right, there you go. I'm so shocked. I could have swore it was going to be a dud. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. I do have a bag, says says Jennifer. Okay, let's go looking for it. Miss Jennifer. Jared, Jack, Jesse, Jacob, James, Jacob. Oh, you do, I'm sorry. Wow, I'm going crazy. Here you go. And we'll still add that bulk, okay? Now, did you order live? I'm trying to see if you ordered live shipping. I would like to have live shipping and would appreciate if most of the bulk is Japanese cards. All right. Sounds good. So then you need to come down here and we need to say live. And I've got my work cut out for me for this live shipping. We got a ton of live shipping to do. All right, sweet. I think we're all done, everyone. Hold on, give me a moment. We are all done. All right. That's going to be the end of the live stream. Now, I will go ahead and reveal what the next pack was. We're not having a giveaway anyways. I don't know why I'm doing this, but you can see that it's just a non-hollow rare. So there's no need for the getting disappointed that we're not having uh, our typical daily giveaway. The reason why we're not having our typical daily giveaway 
is because we're having a much nicer giveaway. So this is a giveaway of a golden Rillaboom and golden Colossal graded nine and seven. So they're not quite as valuable, but they still have some value and they look really lovely. These will be handed out tomorrow in tomorrow's live stream. However, if you check the description of the live stream and follow the rules at the top, if you scroll up to the top of the description, there'll be some, some uh, instructions. If you follow those instructions, you will be enrolled for that giveaway and somebody will walk away with these two cards by the end of tomorrow's stream. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the live stream. I appreciate all of your uh, patronage, and I will see you guys in the next live stream tomorrow.